Hey, we are live. Welcome to In Your Ear Radio. I am your host, LaToya. How do you like this designer face mask? This is just a reminder to you all who go out in public and you have to mask it up that you don't really have to wear a boring mask, put on a designer mask and look real sexy. Um, you can buy this mask at Beige Lifestyle. If you go to Instagram, they got different colors, nice styles, small black business on the hills of Black History Month. I definitely want to represent for black businesses. You know, if your lipstick smudges a little, you can also just you know touch it up a little bit. Um, I have a lipstick by Precisely Me, which is a, another small business with 10-year-old girl, Alexa June, who is making lipsticks and polishes. And um, she named them herself and they're coming out soon. So I just want to let you guys know about some small businesses. But I'm also super duper, super, super excited today because we have a very, very special guest. And I'm just so happy to have her, excuse me. I'm so happy to have her today. And I'm just so grateful that she took the time to be with us today. So before I bring her on, for those who may not know who she is, and thank you all that are watching on Facebook. I see you guys coming in and on YouTube, which just reminded me that I need to share the video. So let me do that first before I forget. And then um, we'll go ahead and um, start up. So remember, you guys, if you have any questions for Don, you can put them in the chat. She definitely wants to hear from you all and answer any questions you may have. Okay, I'm hitting the share button now. Sharing group. Done. Okay, all right. Okay, so today we have Miss Don Robinson. For those of you who may not know, she is an American singer, songwriter, model, and actress. She is best known as a founding member of the R&B group in Vogue, one of the world's best-selling girl groups of all time. Don's vocal range spans two octaves and five notes. She is a dynamic lyric soprano. As a member of Invo, Don was often credited for harmonizing the highest parts of their songs. Following her departure from Invo in 1997, Don joined Lucy Pearl and released their self-titled debut album, Lucy Pearl. And that was in 2000, which went platinum worldwide and produced a successful singles, Dance Tonight and Don't Mess With My Man. Throughout her career, Robinson has sold a comp and combined total of 11 million records as a solo artist, as well as within Vogue and Lucy Pearl. Her work has earned her several awards and nominations, including seven Grammy nominations, seven MTV Music Awards, three Soul Train Music Awards, and two American Music Awards. In 2002, Dawn released her first solo album, self-titled Dawn, which produced the single Envious. In 2005, Robinson joined Invo for a tour. She rejoined them for a tour, but departed from the group before they could re record another album in 2009. Robinson briefly returned to Invo again for the 20th anniversary tour in 2010. She then left Invo once again due to poor management and compensation of work. And she is here today to tell her truth about her very intriguing life as an actress, singer, and songwriter. Welcome, Don Cherise Robinson. Oh my goodness! Wow, Latoya, thank you. Oh, my gosh. oh all that history. Listen, you are an accomplished woman, and yes. I am so happy to be in your presence today. I oh, just want thank you, Latoya. I just want to just you know, off top, I just want to just thank you for the spirit and your energy for even taking a time to to be on a platform like this one. This isn't some big, huge platform on- It doesn't uh, matter. It radio, doesn't matter. Right, I know, understand. Millions right. of followers. Right. But, you know, my people love you too. And yes. I respect that you respect your fans on, on all platforms. So I just exactly. appreciate that. I Thank appreciate you that. so, and I appreciate you. I have to give it right back to you because I've been telling everybody that I do these interviews with probably 80 interviews or more now by now. I appreciate you guys because you have an audience. It doesn't matter if it's 10 people or 100 people or 1,000 or 10,000. It doesn't matter. I'm grateful to be in front of all the people and get to talk to them and tell my story. Just to reconnect to the fans, it's really beautiful to do yeah. that. So I'm appreciating yeah. you as well. Thank and you. I Thank also you. appreciate the fact that you just gave a lot of the local businesses here in Vegas, because I didn't know you were in Vegas. Yes. Um, you're giving them love. 
and those small businesses, no matter what color they are, they still need that love because right now, yeah. stupid COVID is shutting everybody down. I, I don't understand that. It's like you can you can go to Walmart or Walgreens or Costco or uh, in, in Wal, Walmart, like I said, but you got to shut down these little small businesses that need love too. They need more support. They don't have yeah. the billion dollar industry behind them. So I appreciate you doing that. It's very sweet of you. Thank really you. Cool. I mean, listen, and there's quality product in these small businesses as well. So yes, you know, that's what I mean. Girl making her own lipstick and Ten years old. So she inspired me. Yes. That's and the lipstick is bomb. It's beautiful on you. Yeah. So I'm, I'm just excited for her and also babes because the, the masks, I love them because they're cute and I like to get cute when I go out. I, exactly. My worst thing about this whole COVID is these masks. I don't like going out in these masks. No, you know. not at all. And and I keep that telling people to make sure that they breathe. I leave my nose exposed. I'm not about to breathe my yeah. own uh, waste because you're breathing carbon monoxide is supposed to be out. Once we breathe in clean air, we breathe out waste. And when we wear masks, we're keeping that all locked inside. And I'm just like, I'm not doing that. They're trying. That's a that's a pandemic to me. So yes. Yes. it's a beautiful mask, though. It's really pretty. Very lace. And it was cute. Yeah. Yeah. I like that a lot. Let me just yeah. straighten out, though. You said... Um, that I, I came back to the group in 2005, was it? Uh -huh. No, I came I, I, back to the group in 2009 and 10. So we toured that whole year. Okay. 2009 oh. to 2010 for the 2010. Um, the year 2010 was our 20 year anniversary. Mm -hmm. And that's, and then they took the deal with Rough Town Records, which is why I left because I, didn't, I wasn't going to sign to Rough Town because it was a bad deal. And yes. About a month after they signed that deal, because they were pissed at me that I didn't sign. Maxine was like, I don't understand. Terry, Terry was like, you have to explain to me why you don't want to sign this deal. And I said, well, first of all, this is not 1990 or 1989 right. when we were kids. And I don't right. have to, as, as a grown woman, I don't have to explain anything to you. But if you looked at the contract at all, you would see that in that contract on the first page, second paragraph, it says you'll get 10,000 upon signing and 40,000 if the album is successful. You're not gonna get 50,000 up front altogether. It's not happening. Mm -hmm. It's a small label, it's an independent label. Reptown was not a major, it was not uh, you know, Capitol Records or RCA yeah. or MCA or Motown. This is a small label. And you think this man has uh, $200,000 to give us? 50 grand a piece, that's, not, right. that's a lot of money. And um, and a month later, Maxine sent me an email and said, Dawn, you were absolutely right. Uh, this rough town deal is crap. We probably have to sue Renee to get out of it. Like, I told you guys. So that's why I didn't stay in the group. I left because they were stupid. They took the wrong deal. And I wasn't about to do that. So, yeah. I yeah. just wanted to clear that because you had some things in there. And, yeah. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. But, yeah. you know, that, and that's we sold 20, 28 million records when I left in 97. What? Not 11 million. Yes, it was 28 million. 28 million? Yes, exactly. Wow, how much of that money did you guys see? Two cents a record. So not much of anything at all. Yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. It is it nuts. Is. It is nuts. It is. Yeah. So, um, you know, that's one of the issues with the music in industry. And, and thank goodness a lot of us are smartening up. Because I think back to, you know, our grandparents in the Motown era, and where they're just now, you know, through lawsuits, benefiting from um, what do you call it? The um, the royalties. royalties they're exactly. getting royalties. Yeah. And so exactly. now they're getting that now, and people are starting to really read these contracts and understand. And a lot of people are going independent now because they understand, you know, especially now it's easier to do. It you is. You can easier. make. There's no middleman. You don't really need that middleman. Exactly. And if if you have a fan base already, that's a blessing. Yes. It's really hard for new artists to get a a, a, a following, but it's much easier for them today with the internet to get a following because they can go on places like TuneCore. Um, yes. I don't know if they can necessarily go on the bigger like Apple, uh, Apple Music or anything like that. Um, but they can go on YouTube and put their own, if they can do a makeshift video, yes. even if they put just audio, you still can get an audience. You can build an audience that way. You know what I mean? You yes. don't, and, and social media helps a lot. Yes. Come on. Yes. I'm so happy for these young artists coming up now. Yes. Um, and people that missed the boat or they didn't get a deal because the majors didn't think they were good enough. It's like, fuck you. Now I can go. Excuse me. Uh, I have a potty. No, it's OK. Listen, it's so I hard listened. for them. Yeah. It was really difficult for them to get a deal because the record company listens to two seconds of a song and says, oh, no, that's not good enough. Yeah. 
and they were really talented or they just had a dream to do the music and nobody gave them a chance. So now they have direct access to a fan base that they can build on their own. Yes. On yes. the internet. You know, the internet is good and bad. It's it's got this it's got some sick people on there doing stuff with children that should not happen. But it's yes. also a, a great venue for people with music or any product that they want to sell. You know? Yes, it's a, definitely a great resource. I, I, yeah. I'm definitely happy to be able to have access to it. And it doesn't Me cost too, much. Happy. Yes, yes. Thank you so much. I'm just, you know, I, I think about everything that you've experienced in your career. And I just want to go into everything. But I want to start from the beginning. But I know that you're here in Vegas as well. And I just, yes. I'm a native. I've been here all my okay. life. Oh, my gosh. That's How so long cool. have you been here? I just got here five months, five years ago, five months, five years ago. Uh, my parents, yes, my parents moved out five here. Five years. Exactly. Uh, they moved out here and I came out literally, I came out with them maybe two months before they moved here to try and help them find the place. We didn't see anything that they liked. So they went back to the Bay Area. And then my sister brought them out like two months later and they found a place. And this is the house that they're living in now. And it's a four bedroom home and it's like they're renting. Uh, for the first time, they have a garage uh, because my mother typically lived in, in apartments all our lives. So they okay. never had a garage for my, my stepdad to putter around in. He's got a backyard. They bought a, a lawnmower. <laughs> so oh, my. Dad, yeah. Yes. I don't miss those days. It's a huge <laughs> house and they love it here. They really do. And I only came out here to literally help them unpack and kind of acclimate to living in a new city. And it was like, I... So typically what En Vogue does is we would fly into Vegas the night before. We go to the, uh, to the casino, mm -hmm. get in our rooms. The next day we would do sound check, do the show. The following day we would fly out. We would never actually see Summerlin and Henderson and yes. all these different places. I didn't think people raised kids here. I thought Most people don't think that. Exactly. I really thought it was about nightlife and party 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 i mean this mm -hmm. is the number one capital of the world like it's not paris or new york or chicago it is or los angeles even it's it's vegas yes so i just vegas. thought all this party you know nobody can raise kids here you know what i mean i was just thinking and right. once i saw the city i was like what i could live here so i moved all my stuff here got an apartment and then i did a play and i gave my apartment up because it didn't make sense to be on the road for five months and then have a place so yeah um and then I moved back in with my parents and back and forth. I've gotten a place, come back, and then back and forth. So it's nice being here, but I'm getting ready to get my own place again. And I'm actually yeah. buying a home here. Okay, well. I have to ask you, Latoya. Me. Yes. How? How do you deal with the water? How do I deal with what? The water. The water here is so hard. Well, yeah, I don't drink it. And you have to have a water softener if you don't want your plumbing fixtures to be all damaged oh and build God, the couch exactly. in. Yes. Yes. So I figure yes. if they're tearing up the, the plumbing, so in the sink, you have that little ring mm -hmm. around the sink and, and the little oh, metal yeah. ring in there. And then you have one in the tub as well. It has eaten through a couple of them. And my parents have oh, to yeah. call the landlord and get it replaced. When I yes. had my apartment, I did the same thing. I was like, yes. it was tearing up my sponges. When you clean the tub, mm -hmm. it was, I was like, whoa, if it's doing that, to the plumbing, then what is it doing to our inside? So I don't give it to my I dog. Don't, I, don't, I don't drink that stuff. I get bottled water. Listen, yeah, bottled water for sure. You and have a water, water softener, softener though. Yeah. Because our skin is the biggest organ on our body. Yes. So it's going right through your skin into your system. And I'm like, oh no. Right. Yeah, It'll so. dry your skin out. And you yeah. look beautiful. I know you're not shy about saying how old you are. I want to Thank say you're you. 54, 55. right? No, 55. 55. Congratulations. Yes. Thank you so much. Yes. Listen, you, you don't look nowhere near 40. Thank you. You look 55, okay? Yes. I mean, you look so great. Much. How are you keeping yourself wow. looking so young and youthful and, and fit? What What are you doing? It's What's really the same a big part of it. Everybody's like, no, that can't be true. But a big part of it is me literally saying I am young. My dad... It's also in the genes, of course. My dad, I yes. used, used to tell him, Dad, uh, are you my son and I'm your mother? Because you look so young, like you're younger than me. He, but he had a young spirit. He was very funny. He loved to laugh. He would ride yeah. his bike 22 miles from Long Beach into the Hollywood area. He would live, and oh. I, I'm not talking about like, oh, do, 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 I'm just riding my bike as a leisure. No, he was like 22 miles an hour. Wow. Yeah, he wow. was moving. moving. 22 miles an hour like he was keeping up with cars on the road like seriously so he was very fit and he would also he would play uh video games with my nephews if he was around them his grandsons 
um, he just had a young spirit about him and he was always happy, friendly with everybody. My dad was that. He kept music yeah. in his life too. So I think when you tell yourself you're young, also, of course, uh, I use serums. So you I love serum. those. Yeah, Marshall's has all these serums. Oh yeah, they do. <laughs> <laughs> I stand there for hours, Latoya, hours. And I'm reading and I'm looking and I'm reading. And I'm like, no, nope, I don't want that one. I'm reading again. I'm, so vitamin C serums on the face. Um, okay. Uh, retinol. I know that there's a retinol vitamin C mixture. Like they have so many hydro. Uh, like hydroquinone. Your neck and your face, huh? Exactly. Yeah, the neck as well. Uh, hydroquinone or hydro. It's something hydro something. Yes. And it's in a serum with vitamin C as well. Vitamin C is amazing for the skin. Yeah. Really amazing. And I thought um, it was vitamin E, so it's vitamin C that. Uh, vitamin E is great too, but yes. vitamin C will clear up all those marks and any kind of marks you have, dark circles on your mm -hmm. eyes. Um, next time I'm on another show, I'll bring the uh, the, the vials that I use. But okay. the serums go a long way. You put one on at night, that's totally different than the one that you use during the day. Okay, and they really do work. Great. Oh my, Beautiful. thank you. You do too, though. Come on, well, thank you. Yeah, thank you. I'm awesome. listening. You are my Beautiful. ambition. Women like you that look so good just make me look forward to getting older. And I just yes. love the way you thank celebrate you. all of your years. You know, some women don't like to talk about their age. And you know, that's their business. You know why? Let me just go into that a little bit. I think they do that because society makes us feel like getting older is a problem. I agree. And that if you don't look like you're 20 anymore, that there is a problem. And it's like, wait a minute, nobody's going to look 20 forever. Right. Um, but it's your attitude, like I said, and it's also what you eat. I know that a lot of the stuff we eat is toxic. Dr. Savey went into yeah. that before he passed away. And thank God yeah. there's so many videos on him talking about. Food is electric. It's alive. If you eat dead food, you're going to look dead. You're going to feel dead. You're not going to have mental clarity and all that stuff. People that get uh, Alzheimer's and all that stuff, um, uh, dementia and Alzheimer's yes. and all that. Oh, you know, yeah. You're pretty oh, yeah. much, if you're eating a dead animal, what do you think you're going to get out of that? So being here with my parents, I, I was a vegan before I moved back in with my parents. Um and my roommates were like all vegan. So it was really easy for the household. I mean, and they would make, I miss it so much. And I tell them all the time, you guys, I'm coming over because I miss that. Um, but they would make, one of the girls would make a fettuccine Alfredo. She would literally use cashews, like the unsalted, uh, not raw, but roasted cashews. She would soak them overnight in water. She would um, mash them up in like one of those blenders. What do you call those? Uh, uh, Cuisinart, I think it was. Okay. And so it would make a paste. Like she would add uh, cashew milk to it. She would add uh, garlic, all kinds of stuff to make the to make the sauce. Okay. And it would look just. My parents came over one night and they they made dinner for them. And I said, please, you guys, please, 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 make that fettuccine alfredo for my parents. She would she would also use. Instead of using regular egg noodles, she would use um, either spinach noodles or edamame noodles. No, that was the green ones. I use a spaghetti squash. Spaghetti squash. She would do that too that. sometimes, but uh, I didn't yeah. like the texture in the fettuccine because that fettuccine sauce is really thick. Okay. But I do use that. I like that too, but for yeah. different sauce. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, thinner sauce. Um, and yeah she would make that and we would my parents would, i didn't even tell them at first i just had i made their plates for them and i sat down and i was looking at them she put um i would make the mushrooms because i like my mushrooms to have a little more flavor so i would saute the mushrooms and i would put garlic uh powder garlic mm -hmm. salt uh, a little bit i'm sorry sea salt garlic, garlic powder um and just make that a a, a flavorful sauce and make the mushrooms really flavorful and then put that uh, in the um, in the in the sauce, and then put yeah. that on the plate. It was amazing. Like like you just you, why eat animals if you can eat vegan and still have the same flavors? I think texture and flavor is hard for yeah. people to leave meat. Right. You know what I mean. And so they're I like, agree. oh my god, yeah, I have to have real cheese, and I gotta have them. like that cheese is tearing up your insides though. You're not understanding because they stress the cows out so much. I don't want to get in uh, into all this vegan stuff, but. I think part of that, part of that is our health, you know, looking how you look. Yes. You know what I mean? Really determines. Yeah. I agree. You know, I think the hardest part would be, you know, transitioning to vegan is having. Are you vegan? No, I'm, um, I haven't Vegetarian? eaten pork. 
Um, yeah, well, I haven't eaten pork or beef in over almost 30 years. Me either. It's a so. long time for both. I'm good with that. I, I was not a big meat eater before that anyway, so it wasn't hard yeah. to let those go. Um, yeah. My stepdad makes chicken and sometimes eggs, and I'm just like, I, the other day I saw an older black man. I'm sorry, I know you were talking. I'll get back to that. Oh, yeah, go ahead. He said this, Latoya. He said, he was from the island. You could tell a very strong accent. He said, it's very difficult when you eat an animal that is stressed out. First, it has the adrenaline of being killed before they kill it, right? Mm -hmm. So it goes into fight or flight. It's scared because yeah. anybody that's getting ready to get killed knows the, the your heart palpitations and all that stuff that happens. Yeah. And then all that adrenaline spills out into the meat and then they sell it in the store and we eat it. So the actions of the animal and the mentality of the animal no wonder men are so angry with each other. You know what I mean? That, that fighting and, and wars and anger and have to control each other. It's like that is what you're getting. You're eating the animal and the animal's mentality is in the meat. I'm like, well, you, that makes sense. It does make sense. But you know, some people, their rebuttal may be that they um, eat organic uh, or uh, animals that are treated a little bit nicer. They're not in a factory or whatnot. Yes, exactly. And I understand that. Uh, there was a young lady named Temple forgot her last name, I always forget that. She was literally autistic. She is autistic, she's still alive. She was autistic, but she said she didn't like the way animals were being treated when they were slaughtered. There's gotta be another way. So she came up with a, a better way to not stress the animal out before it dies. It doesn't even know that it's been cut around the neck because it goes into a water system and it's floating around in the water and then this thing kind of slowly, and it's like, but you're still dying. You're still eating dead flesh. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I, that's what's hard. It's it's like you're eating a dead, you're eating carcass. That can't be good. <laughs> this because there's no. nothing alive in that flesh anymore. It's literally a dead piece of chicken. It is a dead animal. So would you look at a pigeon that was no feathers on it and, and, and none of the blood in the pigeon anymore and that you would eat that pigeon? Everybody's like, no, oh, I would eat a pigeon. But that we're eating a chicken the same way. And in other countries, yeah, a cow, a cow is looked at as sacred. Like they can't even believe that we eat cows. You know, well, they so, eat. Oh, and I go. I've been to you know my Mexican family members' parties where they put the pig in the ground. They look at, and that's me. I can't eat something I, if I see it whole. Like <laughs> once you hit the city and chop it up and put it in my Alfredo, we good. But okay. <laughs> the whole animal just looking at me with the eyes. Even the fish. I don't want no eyes on my fish. Exactly. Oh. I can't, uh, uh, no, I can't do that. And I can't do the shrimp with the heads on them. Right, there's no, a, I'm good. There's a place out here that I'm going to tell you about, a place called um, Chef Kenny's. And it's all vegan. He makes this beef that you would, it, it, I here look at it like you guys, no, I'm sorry, it has to be beef. It tastes just, it looks just like beef. I think, again, for people to go vegan, it's for them, it's texture, it's color. It has to look like chicken. It has to taste yeah, like texture. beef. It has to look like prawns or shrimp. And he makes these salt and peppered prawns kick your ass. They're so good. And I'm just Are like, that's me? all vegan. It's all it's Chef Kenny's. Yes, incredible. It's 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 incredible. Oh. It's on flamingo and rainbow. Yeah. Okay, I gotta make a note of that. I definitely have to check that out. He comes around to your table. The owner of the place, Chef Kenny, comes around to your table just to talk to people. And one time you talked to us about coming back from Vietnam where they were making this uh, vegan, he, he brings back ideas all the time about vegan food and stuff that he finds in other countries that he thinks, oh my gosh, I got to try that in the restaurant. So he has these beef rolls. It looks like filet mignon. I'm sorry. It is filet mignon, but it yeah. is vegan. Really? Kick she your butt. Give me some delicious vegan food and I'm good. Come I, on. I mean I'm like, it's not hard do you? exactly. Thank you. But it has to taste right. His is right. He has a line of people always when I go there. It's never, ever. I just walk in. Okay. Because that's how good his food is. Like they wait for hours. The shutdown makes it even harder because it's like he's got every other table. So it's like, ah, I'll wait a couple hours for him. Yeah, I will. He's that good. Okay. I think oh, you, oh. you might have converted a few people. You got a lot of people shouting you out on YouTube and I Facebook. Know, did you get any snow here in Vegas? None? My parents, actually, yeah, they had, um, I'm looking in the backyard now, and they did have snow on the ground a yeah. little bit. We were shocked. Because, yeah. you know, yeah. this is the desert. We're not supposed to have snow? What? No. 
We're yeah. getting it more and more nowadays too. Mm-hmm. More and well, more. Well, the planet is shifting, and I keep telling people it's. From the time before man was on the planet, the planet has always sh- shifted and, and changed and um, storms and stuff is what shaped and formed the earth. It shaped, shaped and formed the mountains having earthquakes, you know? Yeah. So that is what, it, it's natural to have that on the planet. It's nothing new. Um, it's just yeah. a little scary because we can't control, you know, what's happening. So it kind of scares us a little bit, but fear not, but- fear not. You know, God has it all under control. Africa's asking for the restaurant name again, the vegan restaurant. She's about to come off of her. Uh, Chef Kenny's. Yes, Chef Kenny's. Um, Chef Kenny is the owner, and it is called Chef Kenny's. And it's in, um, it's almost in Chinatown, but it's on Flamingo. And um, so it's on the corner of Flamingo, and um, the cross street is, so Chef Kenny sits here, and mm-hmm. the cross street is Rainbow. And this is uh, Flamingo and Rainbow. Okay. So Chef Kenny's is what it's called. That's what's incredible, up. incredible. Um, it's mostly sushi and Chinese food. So the 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 fried rice you can get a combination fried rice like he has um, vegan pork and vegan combination. Vegan. So beef, yes, chicken. Oh. He has this. Okay, so there's a dish that is African, South African, I think, and it's a bread, and it's mm. a puffy. It's a puffy kind of bread, and it's um, you put it in, you dip it in this uh. I just had it the last time I was there and I said I was going to remember. But you dip it in like a, um, it's almost, what is it called? It is not tikka masala. It's olive oil in it? No, no, no. It doesn't. But it's like, um, it is a, uh, come on, Dawn. You got it. You got this. It is. I'm trying to think of what it could be. Curry. Is it a wine? It's a what yellow it? curry. A yellow curry. Oh, curry. I like curry. It's got potatoes in there and curry in the sauce. So you dip it. And so in, in Africa, you sometimes in certain parts of Africa, you eat with your hands. Yeah. And you break this bread and the bread is so, it comes warm to the table and it's puffy. And by the time you open it up, it flattens out because it's puffy when you get it. And then you open it in it. Yeah. When I tell you, oh, geez, I'm going there tomorrow. I'm going to it is so bomb though yeah, so i appreciate it oh my god i want to i definitely want i want to dig into your life and career i think it's so interesting that you started singing at the age of two and you have seen like beatles songs like michelle yes, my bell exactly like, isn't that crazy my dad um was a beatles head like he's just when i when i talk to him for his birthday or i send him a message um and i say hey dad um you know, because he's he's passed on, but I say, hey, dad, um, Beatles forever, because he was just a Beatles head, Beatles head. Yeah. So we were in the car and he said I was two years old. My parent, my mom tells me, too. She said, yeah, you came in. He came running in the house talking about she could sing. And I was harmonizing with him. I wasn't just following him along and singing what he sang. Yeah. I was actually singing another note above him. And he was like, wow, she she got it like she can really sing. So you ran in the house. And my mom was like, really? Really, Johnny? Because she can't even talk. And you're telling me she can sing in French? Okay. And he played the song in the house. And my mom was like, what? Do it again. (laughs) She had to play it again because she couldn't believe it. But I was singing Misha My Bell at two. Yeah. Exactly. That's just so sweet. And it it sounds to me like just learning more about you, that your background, that you kind of gravitated to like rock and pop music more so as far as your anchor with singing. Is that I true? I would say so. I, you know, it's a mixture of both because they both loved R&B music um, as well. So my dad would play Sam and Dave. You know, my mom would play the Supremes and, and all the uh, Motown sound, I would say. Um, but they both loved everything. My dad loved Chicago, uh, the Eagles, um, Led Zeppelin. We, we heard a lot of that in the household. And that's my yeah. love for rock and roll comes natural because of him. But my mom loved it too. She wouldn't tell him to turn it off, in other words. Like they, you know, they yes. both loved all that music. Um, and I'm grateful because she wasn't a she wasn't a black mother that said if it's not gospel or jazz or uh soul or R and B music that you can't play that in the house. She allowed him to play whatever he liked too, and she loved the same thing. Blood, sweat, yeah. tears. She was just talking about um oh boy, was it um three dog night? The other day, I was like, Mom, you remember that? She said, oh, my gosh, old-fashioned love song or one is the loneliest number or Mama told me not to come. Um, Mama told me not to come. Like that song. We were singing, I like the way that 
that ain't the way to have fun. So she was singing that with me the other day. We were having a ball because she has a uh, Siri in her room now. Okay. So that that kind of music for her, I was like, Ma, you really were tolerant. You know <laughs> what I mean? Because it wasn't R and B, it wasn't soul music. So for All her right. to say, I like that too, showed me how open minded she was as well. Um, and they both yeah. love jazz. They both would play that as well in the house. Um, but it was all kinds of music, Brazilian music, Sergio Mendez, uh, mm. a lot of different music. Yeah. It's a good music. It's just good music. That's why they say music is universal. Cause it doesn't matter it's, what you look like. It's what you sound like. It absolutely. Comes out of that. Exactly. Right. What you feel. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. Um, my music mom the other day was playing something on YouTube and she said, Oh my God, I, I remember that song. You weren't even born yet. And I was like, wow, mom, that was a thousand years ago. And she said, yeah, you weren't even born yet. And and my dad's friend, because they had just, my mom and dad had just met. And she said, he told her, he said, uh, my dad's friend said, Barbara Jean, you need to get this guy's album. And it was a jazz album. And the song was on YouTube. It was playing because they were playing music all day long. We were cleaning the house last Saturday. And she said, um, she was singing the music. Da -da -da -da. Da, da, da. And he's a piano player. She was just singing along with the music. That is what music does to you. You can remember stuff when you were 14 years old. Oh, or yeah. A moment, or a moment in your life that changed everything for you, whether it was a good moment or a bad moment. That song was on the radio, it was playing in the background, and you it, you have that memory. You were in a car accident right then, or music has that memory for you. That's how yeah. powerful music is. So. I'm just grateful to be in this line of work because we bring memories to people. We hopefully make everybody happier. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and, yeah. yeah. People are like, oh my God, I was going to college or I met my husband or wife when that album came out, you know, Born to Sing or uh, <laughs> when my grandmother had just passed away or grandfather when, you know, that song came out. That yeah. Our music has memories. You know what I mean? It's so beautiful yeah. to be a part of that. It is. It's a beautiful thing. And, it you know, is. I know you, when you got into music, was it something that you dreamed of doing? Was it like, when I grow up, I want to be a singer? Heck yeah. Yes. What? Because remember, okay. from such an early age, my father knew that I had talent and my parents both played music in the house. So it was just life. It was literally, it is in my DNA. It is in my veins. You know, music is just life to me. I can't imagine life without music. It just would be different. It wouldn't be life. If you ask me, it just would not be. So, um, yeah, uh, it was It was definitely in my blood to be a singer. I wanted to be, my mother would, um, when my parents broke up, I was five years old. And so on her own, she would just bring home music too, because they knew, like I said, at an early age that I could sing. So she would bring home all these female artists that we didn't even know. I remember her bringing home Mickey Howard's album for the first time, Come Share My Love, that first album. I remember her bringing home um, Brenda Russell, her, her um, not Piano in the Dark, because that was later. I was yeah. in high school, I think, by that time. But I think uh, it was um, In the Thick of It is the name of that album. So she brought home all this music. And I'm like, who is this, Ma? I don't know. Just play it. And we would learn. I would learn those songs and sing along with those artists. So. Um, yeah, th th it was, it was definitely in my blood to be a singer. I, I loved it from an early yeah. age. Yeah. Just moving into the singing career. Um, so your first professional, um, debut was with In Vogue, right? Right. Exactly. You had the audition yeah. for this girl group that was coming up. Was it the Anita Baker you sang? Anita Baker, was that the first song you did for your audition? I did. Well, was for the audition, song? we had a different song we had Waiting on You, which ended up okay, on the record. Yeah. Um, but for my personal audition. So I was at a concert with my friend Kim and uh, we were, every year we would have the worst seats because my mother would buy my ticket and her mother would buy her ticket. But this year, okay. since we were out of school, out of high school, two years out of high school, we bought our own tickets. Um, and we bought the better tickets because it was VIP. Right. We wanted to be in the <laughs> VIP area. <laughs> so thanks mom, but no, I'm, I'm doing it different this year. So we were both in the VIP area with our friends, um, Lawrence and Michael. And they weren't our boyfriends or anything. We weren't dating them, but we were like, okay, let's go go to the restroom, which was a uh, code for let's go check out guys, really. Yeah, and, yeah. Um, when we got to the top of our section, this guy said, excuse me. And we both turned around and he said, are you a model? And I was like, whatever. 
Oh, geez, <laughs> I, I, I totally, yeah, I played him off. I just ignored him. I was so rude, so extremely rude. And then when we came back, we had popcorn and a drink. And we came back. She had a drink. I had popcorn. When we came back, we were facing him now because before he was behind us. So when we came up the stairs, we were supposed to turn that way, and he was behind us. So now I'm looking right at him, and he's like, excuse me, I'm the guy. There's a bunch of people walking back and forth and crossing us. And he was like, I'm the guy who just asked you if you could sing. And I was like, I am not a singer. I'm sorry. I'm not a model. <laughs> and he said, um, well, can you sing? Are you a singer? Can you sing it all? And I said, uh, yes. <laughs> yes! Yes. Oh, my God. And I stood there and talked with him. We both stood there for a while. And then Kim was like, um, popcorn. The next act is, is coming on right. stage. And I think it was Stevie B or Cover Girls, one or the other. And okay. um, and she went and sat back down on the scene. She took the drink and everything with her uh, to go sit down. And I stood there and I talked with him almost an hour. All my friends are having an audition. Their names are this. They're doing this. They were in this group called Timex Social Club and um, yeah. uh, Club Nouveau. You know, Club Nouveau. Number nine. Ooh, yeah. Exactly. Situation number nine, uh, jealousy and all that. I was like, oh, my yeah. God. You know, these guys. I can't sing, like, but in my head, I'm singing while you're saying all this. Situation <laughs> number nine. Blowing my mind. I don't I don't know the song. That's either. it. That's it. Situation number nine. Jealousy. <laughs> don't want the bad stuff around. That's right. Yeah, exactly. That's right. I don't remember. That's right. <laughs> um, but yeah, or lean on me. When you're not strong, I'll be your friend. Yeah, they did that. Beautiful. Um, beautiful song, exactly. Well, that was Bill Weathers first, but yeah, mm -hmm. Diddy and Tommy redid it. Um, yep. so I was like, oh my God, you know, these guys are like the, the truth, like, wow. And he said, yeah, so you can come to my house and I can hear you sing. So I can hear you sing. I want to know if you actually have talent. And I was okay. like, no, I will not. I am not coming to your house. I don't know okay. you. <laughs> you are not going to get me to come to your, uh, excuse me? No. And two days later, he came to my parents' house. Cause it, at that time I was still living at home. Um, it's like a repeat of that now because I'm still living with them. But um, yeah, so he came there and he was like, oh, my God, I sang Anita Baker. I sang uh, Been So Long. Yeah, that's my song. Oh, Been my God. So oh, my gosh. Exactly. Yes. And I had that low. That's what amazes me, how you can do your voice low. You go low, but then you go oh high. And it's like effortless. Like just I had to. Thank you so much. I had to, though, because she she goes, she's very low at first and then she mm -hmm. comes up and the second verse, she's a little bit higher. Um, and then he was like, oh my God, yeah, you got it. And then I did been, yeah. uh, that was been so long. And then I did a rapture just to prove oh. it, just to hit it home that I got it. Yeah. <laughs> he was like, yeah. He was like, oh my gosh, yeah, you got talent. You could definitely, so the audition is in a week. He gave me the, the address. And a week later, um, the night before, my mom was like, do you want me to take you to the audition? And um, I said, Ma, no, I asked Jackie, my best friend, and she's working. But I asked Dana, I want my sister to take me. I don't want my mom sitting with me at an audition. You know what I mean? Right. Um, she's like, OK, all right, fine. And uh, the next day, we went to the audition. And that changed my life, Cindy's life, Terry's life, and Maxine's life. So did you all know each other before the, the group was formulated? We met each other. So Cindy and Terry knew each other because of a project they did for, uh, what's the runner? Um, Carl Lewis. Carl Lewis. Okay. Yeah, he wanted to do an album, actually. He wanted to be a singer. So they sang background for him, and they met each other there. Maxine knew of Cindy, but had never met her before. She didn't know Terry, but she looked at me, and we looked at each other like, you look familiar. Do you know, like, do you know this person? And do you, you know, you go through that whole thing. Okay. So, um, did you used to work here? Did you know this person? Did you? And I'm like, no. Did you go to this church? No. She said, no. Um, I'm like, uh, did you used to, did you play, uh, did you perform with Brenda Vaughn? Everybody in the Bay Area performed with Brenda Vaughn. Um, okay. she's a local Bay Area favorite and she's okay. well known in Japan even because she was over there for years. You say Brenda Vaughn's name in Japan and like, oh, uh, Japan, uh, uh, Brenda Vona, uh, they know her very well. So she was like, no, I sang with her, but I don't think you were singing background at that time. And I said, probably not. And then we were like, she said, um, I do hair. I braid hair. Did you get your hair braided? And I was like, I haven't done braids, but 
maybe um, she said, maybe you came to the salon where I worked. And she told me where the salon was. I was like, yes, that's exactly it. She said, Jeffrey owns that place. I said, um, is he a skinny guy? She said, yeah. And his brother's skinny as well. Jeffrey and, um, oh, I forget his brother's name now. He's probably going to kill me if he sees him. Girl, you forgot my name. Is this Jeffrey uh, from the Jeffrey's hamburger joint? <laughs> exactly. No, it wasn't. <laughs> but no, he's in the Bay Area. They're, they're in the Bay. And they had a hair salon. And he asked me, I, I told the person that was doing my hair, it wasn't Jeffrey, but I told the person that was doing my hair that I'm a singer. And she told Jeffrey. And then Jeffrey came over to me and he said, um, oh, so so she tells me that you can sing. And I was like, yeah. And he said, um, well, uh, and then he called Maxine. And I remember her turning around and she said, yes, Jeffrey. And he said, um, Maxine, this girl, what's your name again? <laughs> and I said, Dawn. And he said, Dawn, she's saying that she can sing. So why don't y'all sing something together? And Maxine came walking over and she said, uh, okay, nice to meet you. And I said, nice to meet you too. And she said, um, what do you want to sing? I don't know what to sing, Jeffrey. What do you want? And he said, whatever the song was. And we sang it together. Okay. So she thinks it was, if you play your cards right, we forgot. Like, hey. all the music, if you play your cards right and um, if you play your cards right. Yeah, everything's gonna be all right with me. So we yeah. sing, we either sing that or um, "Don't Let It Go to Your Head Now" oh, by Gene Carn. Yeah, "Don't Let It Go to Your Head Now." No, no, no. Yes. But we can't remember what it was, so we kind of just left it at whatever it was. We met each other that day, you know, yeah. and um, both those songs sound similar though. They're in the, kind of the same key. One is a little higher than the other. So that's why I think it's similar in our heads. Um, and yeah, so when we saw each other at the, that's when we were like, oh my God, okay, now I remember, now I remember, yes. But we had only met that one time, never saw each other again until the audition. Oh, wow. Isn't that God? Like, that's so amazing. Yeah, too. it fine. is. Uh, yeah. And, um, and so I had never met Cindy, never met Terry before. So, it was like a couple of us had met each other before, but not the others. Cindy and Terry had met, Maxine and I had met, but that was about it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And I think Maxine, I heard you say that Maxine was really, a, a, had a sisterhood with you. She was very supportive of you and thought you were one of the best singers in the group. Or yeah, the best singer. she did. She really did. She, um, We were in London for the first time because that audition, uh, Waiting on You, ended up, my version ended up on the record. And... So everybody, um, Cindy was like, I'm sorry, Terry, we were in her room because we were waiting for the hotel to change rooms with her because she didn't want to be across from our manager. She had a big, huge glass window and he was looking right down in her room, into her room. And she was like, I can't. And she only had these sheer curtains. So she was like, I don't know who could stay in this room with anybody looking in like this. But we were sitting around waiting and um, Maxine was like, well, Dawn, you know that you have the best voice. You're the best singer in the group or something like that. And, and Terry was like, I don't think so. Excuse me. Oh. Very indignant. Very indignant. Yeah. And I immediately went into playing small. You know how you got to play small to make other people feel big? And I was like, no. And I, and I really meant this. <clears throat> but the way I did it, I would have done it different today. I went into... Maxine, you no, know, that's not true. We all sing good and we're all great singers. And, and you know, no, that's not, but I did sing lead on all the hits. So now I would be like, well, I can see your point. I think we're all great singers, but I sang lead on the biggest hits. So yes. it, was, it wasn't that way at first though. So Maxine, I think said that because my audition was chosen. You'd never hear of someone doing an audition and then that very audition for a movie or for an album ends up on the record or in the movie. That's amazing. Yeah, so I'm proud of that. And I, I always played small because I'm the youngest one in the group and I felt like I had to um, after that moment happened with her saying, you're the best singer in the group. I always played like, no, 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 I'm not good enough. I'm not this enough. I'm not that enough. And I kind of shrunk down and I'm like, no, today, this dawn now, <laughs> I don't do that no more. No, not be able to do it. No, 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 no <laughs> not, not be at all. Because I know yeah. what I bring to the table and I'm proud of that. And I don't ever shrink down. That is amazing to have your audition chosen. Yeah. For anything. Yeah. 
I mean, you didn't shrink down and in vogue at all. I think that's probably why the group ended up parting ways or you ended up leaving. So is it true that they asked you to leave or did you just walk away because of the poor? No, the former, the former was true. They asked me to leave because it's hard to get to the story without telling the, the forefront of it, um, the backstory of it, I should say. But we were at the point where I'm going to try to say this different so I'm not repeating my, I have to repeat myself. Part of the story is, is what it is. So yeah. it's hard. But it we were, well, we were four, we were on our fourth album, about to start our fourth album. We had done our first album under a certain amount of terms, which was fine. That was our first album. Nobody knew who we were. Yeah. So we had to prove ourselves to the world, to our record company, to, um, you know, everybody out there. So the first album, you're getting two pennies a record, you know, okay. But we got a $10,000 advance and it's like, oh my God, for the first time, I've never had money like that in my life. Even 5,000 and 5,000, because we got 5,000 upon signing and the other 5,000 you get when the album is finished. So, okay, oh my God, I, I've never had $10,000 in one sitting, 5,000 at a time. I've never in my life, so wow, I'm a star. We're stars. So I was not questioning anything. Um, the record company is not going to put a lot of money into a new artist at first because they okay. want you to prove yourself to them before they say, OK, well, you're a viable artist. Yeah. You have a following. You have a fan base. So now we're going to put money into you. And, we're, and really, after our first album went platinum the first time, because by the time we started working on the second album, we were three to five million sold mm -hmm. on the first album. When you go platinum or you sell a million copies, you're supposed to tear up your old contract. That's out the window. Right. Give us some more money. Right. Now you, you got leverage. Now. You got leverage. You got leverage. Exactly. Now you got to give us at least a thousand a piece. I'm sorry, a million a piece. Ooh, yeah, that's not <laughs> uh, 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 You know what I mean? Um, so uh, I'm sorry, a dollar per album, oh. at least. And it doesn't it sound like pennies. a lot, but if you go yeah. from two pennies to a dollar, you got right. a lot more. Right. Um, your percentages are higher. You're supposed to ask for um, more of an advance. They, they could have given us a million a piece for that second album, Funky Divas, and not even, they wouldn't have missed it. They wouldn't have sweated at all. It would have been like, oh, yeah, no problem. Mm -hmm. But nobody, nobody ever did that for us. So here we are. <clears throat> we did Funky. So Born to Sing, Funky Divas, Runaway Love album, which was one new single, Runaway Love, but it was remixed for all the other songs that we had. So yeah. remix for Hold On, Never Gonna Get It, blah, blah, blah. Then you got, we did uh, uh, we did Don't Let Go. We did What a Man with Salt and Pepper. Like, we're doing all this stuff, yeah. and we're still not getting paid, y'all. So here we are, and I kept getting Maxine. We would get on the phone, and we would have these powwows, like, Max, we got to get more money. We deserve this. But Dawn, you're absolutely right, because Denny and Tommy, that. And once I went to Denny's, um, what do you call it? His uh, mansion. Okay. That's when it was like ding, ding, ding. The bells and whistles. The sirens are going. I'm like, what the? F we bought this for you, and when he yeah. said, <laughs> a lucrative business, say, huh? Lucrative, I, you see? Yeah. <laughs> Heck yeah. When he said he made the mistake of telling us how much this damn mansion, you're bragging. And in the process of bragging, and first of all, we're coming into Black Hawk. Black Hawk, California is like the Bel Air of the Bay Area. It's like Beverly Hills in okay. the Bay Area. Yeah, you gotta know someone to get into this exclusive neighborhood, right? So once we're driving through the neighborhood and I'm looking around like, what the hell? Like, oh my God, Denny's living like this? Like what? He walks us through his mansion. He's got 11 bedrooms or and nine bathrooms or nine bathrooms and seven bedrooms, something a lot, yeah. okay? And he said, 20, oh, $20 million, yeah, this is my, you know, and I'm like, what? And my big mouth said, wow, so this is what our money bought you. Mm. And the girls looked at me like, okay, you're, you're out. Like, you, he's gonna kick you out the group. And he was like, he went into, immediately went into, no, nah, no, nah, you know, I got it. It was a foreclosure. You know, it was, it was 8 million. Like it was an $8 million foreclosure. Like that was like, he got a deal. Dude, don't, don't, you never tell people that are not doing as well as you, but we're, the reason that you got this mansion in the first place is because of us. And you're going to tell me that you got an $8 million mansion. Hmm. 
I can't afford $800,000 home, let alone an $8 million mansion. Please don't say that. Don't tell anybody else that. That is not a deal. That's still a lot of freaking money. Dude, are you kidding me? So that's when I started waking up more and more. And Maxine and I would have all these conversations. And then I call her the next day. And she's like, well, I talked to Denny last night. And I'm like, what? Maxine, please. Why do you keep doing that? You know, you you called it because she's like, because I don't know if this is the right thing for us to do. I'm like, I understand we're all afraid because we we had never been in that predicament before. Well, we had to renegotiate for anything. We didn't even know the term renegotiate because we had right. never yeah. done it. Yeah. yeah, this was our first, uh, on the first album, we had never renegotiated. And after you, you're around people, you're on the road, you come back, you learn stuff from people, you're having conversations with people. Our first tour, our first major tour, because we did a, a promo tour, <clears throat> excuse me, and we just did club dates all over the place, all over, all overseas, Germany, we came back. And then MC Hammer wanted us to go on the road. Now we're talking to MC Hammer. Cindy was having conversations with him. Um, he's like, you guys are the biggest things on the radio. And you mean to tell me that you guys are making two pennies a record? Like there's something wrong with this picture. So I'm going to have you go to my attorney and I'm going to pay for you guys to sit with him all day. And you ask him whatever questions you want. Bring your contracts, you know, and ask him what is wrong with this picture? What's wrong? What happened? And... That's again, that was my wake up call. Stuff started, you know, after a while you start waking up to life. It's just like anything, you're learning as you go along. And then, right. and so once we were learning like, wait a minute, so our percentage is only this and we're splitting that same percentage between four girls when Denny and Tommy are splitting that same percentage between two guys. So that was uh, a wake up call for me. And I, that's why I started getting Maxine on the phone. Like, they, you know, that attorney said this and we, we're supposed to do that. And uh, we never renegotiated after our first album. So here we are, long story short, here we are on getting ready to do our fourth album. And I was like, Maxine, we gotta get Cindy and Terry on board. We gotta get them to understand that we need to renegotiate our contract. We need more money. Two pennies and out now. We by then we had sold what eighteen million records between you know Born to Sing, Funky Divas, Runaway Love, Don't Let Fucking Go. <laughs> I have to say it like that because all this money is being made, yeah. but not for us. We're not making the money. So um, we got them on the phone, and finally we got a, like a powwow with just the four of us. We mm -hmm. are not going in the studio until. The record company renegotiates, renegotiates with us for more money. We're not going in. We're not doing yeah. anything until Denny and Tommy pay us more money. And we were all in agreement. Cindy, Terry, everybody's fine. We're good. Cindy, Maxine, we're all good. We all agree, the four of us. Okay, cool. Yeah. Next thing we know, Maxine calls me and says, Dawn, you're not going to believe this. Terry is in the studio. What? Yes. And she's recording. Are you kidding me? So we call, We got Cindy on the phone and we called Terry's ass right then on the spot. Terry, what are you doing? Why are you in the studio? Oh, well, you know, um, I don't agree with you guys and what you want to do. To me, it's going against Denny and Tommy and I don't agree with that. And I'm like, Terry, <laughs> it's not against Denny and Tommy. It's for us. Right. Denny and Tommy do what they need to do for themselves as producers. They, they protect each other as partners. We're supposed to do the same for the four of us. We're supposed yeah. to, we're all we have. Nobody's gonna protect us like us. Well, I don't agree with you guys. Um, so I'm just gonna stay in the studio and you guys just, just make decisions without me. Okay. Wow. Yeah, we can't do that, Terry. Cause the record company is gonna be like, um, so we signed the four of you. Where is Terry? And, and they knew where Terry was because they're the ones who gave her the deal. Mm -hmm. So they knew that we were going to renegotiate our contract. They knew that in order for us to stop them from renegotiating, we have to get one of them out of the loop. So we're going to talk to Terry first and get her to do a solo album. So that means that it's okay. divide and conquer. We got yeah. those three over here and Terry, let me yeah. see, I'm doing this right. Terry over here by herself. You know what I mean? And so they knew that by doing that, we had no power. We had no leverage, like you said a little while ago. So we're like, Terry, we can't move without you, but okay. You know, you're already signed. You already have your deal. <clears throat> um, so we had to wait. Seven months later, she's getting ready to go on tour. We supported her tour support, uh, her tour. Um, we went to her first show. 
at the Pantages in Los Angeles, we, uh, we, what else did we do? Oh, she had two singles. She had, um, she I had, remember. I do remember one song. Wherever You Are was her ballad. Wherever You Are, beautiful, yes. Yeah, beautiful ballad. I cried I when I saw the video because I'm like, you're not with us, Terry. Yeah. She was crying <laughs> in the video too. And uh -huh. um, yeah, and I kind of felt like, oh my gosh. So, and then she had, uh, What Did I Do To You was the second single, I think. Yeah. And anyway, she had videos. So in other words, she had financial support from Sylvia. She had videos, she had tour support, she had, um, you know, everything was backed up for her album. And here we are just sitting here. So when they came to me, Terry was getting ready to go on the road and they said, Dawn, do you want to do a solo album too? Sylvia called me, Sylvia Rowan from our label. And I was like, heck yeah, because I'm going to lose my house if I don't. Yeah. So she knew, she knew what she was doing. She knew that that was all divide and conquer. Um, and so all the other girls, they they obviously stuck with it, and you were the one who was who said, I, "I'm not gonna be able to do it." Right. Well, the problem was they asked me to do a solo album too, and when I started recording, I was like three songs in, okay. and they pulled Terry off the road. They pulled me out of the studio and said, "We're not gonna finish your album right now. Uh, we need a new En Vogue album because that was a lot of revenue. If you think about it, mm -hmm. it had been a few years since we hadn't done anything with them." So mm -hmm. uh, it had been a year, I'm sorry. So she would, Sylvia was like, well, we need that revenue. That's a lot of money that we're not getting without an En Vogue album. So we're gonna pull your album right now and we're gonna pull Terry off the road and we're gonna start the next En Vogue album. And I'm like, no, no, you won't. No, because you took Terry's album very seriously. You gave her videos, you gave her tour support, you did all this to get behind Terry and you're not getting behind me at all. Mm -hmm. um, and so I took it personal. And um, I said, so I will stay with En Vogue. I will finish, I will record the album with them, this fourth album, but I want to leave as a solo artist. I want you to revoke my uh, solo rights. So in other words, I'll stay committed to En Vogue, but I'm going to leave and do my solo thing after the En Vogue album is done. Once we're done with this fourth album and recorded this fourth album, then I'm going to start the process of recording my album. Mm -hmm. And she was like, okay, but I want five points for your from your first solo album, four points from your second, three points from your third. Like she was trying to make it as hard as possible for me to leave. Yeah. Um, and I was like, I was undeterred. Um, I went to the studio every day. I recorded that album with En Vogue. And then she she was pissed at me, so she still slighted me. She fe I'm sorry, she felt like I slighted her. Mm -hmm. So she was like, okay. I'm coming to town. I want to meet with all of you for a creative session because the album is almost done. Uh, we had like two songs to finish on that album, that fourth album. And she said, um, I'm going to come and talk to you guys about the creative mode. You know, yes. what the look is going to be this year or this time for this album. Uh, what is going to be your first single? Um, she had a couple of songs that she was going to play from other people because we had two more songs to record. So she wanted to play those for us. Uh, and um, when we got there to the meeting, I was late because I'm always late to every meeting all the time. The rehearsal, anywhere we're at, I'm always late. And I got there and when I walked in, I literally had to walk in the door and sit right down because there were so many people in the room and I'm looking at in Terry's uh, hotel room and I'm looking around and I'm like, hey guys, hey guys, um, hi Cindy. Terry was sitting on the arm of the couch, but she was facing this way. So in other words, she was facing Cindy, who was sitting right next to her, and facing Sylvia, who was sitting right next to her, and facing our, uh, one of our managers. And then I looked over in the corner on, that, on the couch, because the couch was right across from us. Me and Maxine, Maxine was sitting to the right on the floor, <clears throat> and all of them were sitting on the couch. And on the end of the couch was one of our managers, and on, right next to them, and, and Carol, her name is Carol, right next to her was Alan Kovac, and he was in a chair. And then why are our attorneys here? And that was what I was saying in my head because I didn't have a chance yeah. to really say it. I just said hello to everybody real quick. But Sylvia was talking when I walked in. And uh, I was like, okay, our, our, our attorneys are here. This is a creative meeting. They're not supposed to be here. So this is some weird shit going on. So mm -hmm. at the time I had one of those text talk pagers. And I started paging my boyfriend because we didn't have cell phones yet. You probably weren't even born. <laughs> that part. I'll, I'll just, that's a good excuse. But no, I'm at <laughs> 
Exactly. Yeah, I, I, I probably couldn't afford it if I was born. Um, so <laughs> it was everybody had one. Everybody and their mom and my boyfriend had one. Everybody had one. So um, I was texting saying, "Meet me at our manager's house. At my manager's house, something is up." Because they would like putting yeah. it to me like, "Okay, so." Uh, so Dawn, we can't have any hidden agendas. I was like, hidden agendas, okay. She said, well, Sylvia Rowan said, well, you have an album. You're doing an album. I said, but I haven't started it yet. So, and she said, well, you have a you have a solo deal. I said, yes, I do. But it hasn't infringed on anything going on within Vogue at all. Yeah. Like I'm still in the studio with the girls. I almost finished this album with them just like they have. I've been at the studio every single day recording within Vogue. So how does that hinder anything that I'm doing with the girls? My solo album is not any, it's not blocking and Vogue's album. It's not, I, it's, it's not like I call the girls like 20 minutes before I'm supposed to be at the studio and say, Hey, I can't make it today. Or you guys, I'm not going to be at the studio tomorrow. I have not missed one day in the studio with them. So what's the what problem with my issue? solo album? Yeah. She was pissed off because I slighted her. I outsmarted her. When she said she wasn't going to do my album, I was like, okay, set me free as far as my solo rights are concerned, but I stayed in the group as far as the group was concerned. Mm -hmm. I was still with the group, like I said. And yeah. she couldn't think of anything to say to me. She's like, well, we can't have any hidden agendas, blah, blah, blah. So you got to tell us. And, and by then she was putting on her coat to leave because um, she had a flight out that night back to New York. Uh, so you got you to gotta tell us if you're going to be in the group or not. And I said, well, if you're asking me, if you guys are asking me, because you're putting me on the spot, I said, it's really funny that Terry did a solo album too. Terry did a solo album. What's different about Terry doing a solo album and me doing a solo album? And Terry turned to me, because like I said, she wasn't facing us. She was facing this way. She was facing Cindy and Sylvia, which was weird. Mm -hmm. You got all these people in the room and you're not going to face us? Like that was just weird to me. Yeah. So she turned around, she turned and faced me and she said, it's just different Dawn. Terry said this, it's just different. It just is. And I was like, no, no, it's not different. What do you mean it just is? That's not different. You you signed and you were signed to this group at the same time I was. You went there first and now I'm a new member or something like that. I was there at the same day that you came to the audition. In fact, I was there before you because you were late. Yeah. She had bad weather coming in from Houston. So all her flights were canceled, canceled, canceled. So I was like, no, this is no different. We all got in the group at the same damn time. So no, mm -hmm. it's not different. Um, and then uh, Sylvia said, so you are you going to give us an answer or not? And I said, I have to pray on this. I said, but if you're putting me to the fire, like right now, and you're, you're asking me on the spot, I said, I choose me. I've been yeah. in this group for eight years, and we have been broke for eight years. Eight wow. fucking years making two cents a record. I brought it all up right then. And I was like, yeah. wow. I said, Cindy and Maxine, like I said, was sitting to my right on the floor. And I said, Maxine, Cindy, I said, you guys are going to be in my spot one day. This may be you on the hot seat. Yeah. You got to think about this. And Sydney was like, yeah, you're right. You got a point. I got to think about that. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, you you better think about this because what you guys are doing to me is wrong. It is wrong. I haven't done it. There was no, you know, it's called wrongful termination. When you fire somebody wrongfully for doing nothing like right. that, that you could be a boss could be held accountable for that. If they sued, if they fired the person for no reason. You know, it's just certain protections, though, in some states that right to work stuff. So they don't really have to have a reason. Um, really? Yeah. I know time is of the essence, but I definitely want to cram some other things in before yes. we close out the interview. But I wanted to um, just say, because well, I know you mentioned. In that I'm case, sorry. though, I had a contract. So in yeah. that case, they were right. wrong. They There's violated something. your contract. Yeah. I could, like I said, I could see if I didn't show up at the studio and they're just like, Dawn, where are you? Like, we've been waiting. We yeah. haven't seen you in That's four days point. or three days or you know, you keep missing every other day you're at the studio. We need you here all the time. We need you to be committed. And I was committed. Right. So what so was the was reason? No reason? Exactly. There was no reason right. what for was them the reason? to get rid of me. And I know you mentioned the girls didn't have your back and you were an advocate. You were even speaking up about having benefits like health care and, of exactly. course, having better wages because right. you guys definitely deserved it as, yeah, you know, thank you. being the face of the, the group. You were the money makers, right? So Where I appreciate were? that about you. Yeah, I appreciate you being an advocate and not Thank being you. scared to speak up and speak out. And sometimes that's, you know, it's a sacrifice. There's a quote that says, there's a difference between a moment and a movement is sacrifice. And sometimes mm, you have to wow. make sacrifice to wow. stand up for your rights. So I think that's so important. I know I there are a lot that. of questions in the chat about um, the group. They want to know if you come, you're going to get back with them and 
um, what's going on with that. But I want to talk about Lucy Pearl too, because that was my favorite collaboration with you, <laughs> Raphael Sadiq, and what was his name? Tyreek, was it? No, um, uh, um, Ali. Ali Shahid. Ali. Ali. Okay. Yeah. 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 And you know, most I'm sure a lot of people would agree. You know, one of their favorite songs was "I Want to Dance Tonight." That song is a classic. You can play that yes. anytime and still yeah. get it popping. And I just love that. <laughs> but leaving in vogue and going into Lucy Pearl to me it seemed like for you was a breath of fresh air. What What it happened? Was. What What happened? It was because Lucy Pearl was so free. So it's funny you say that. It's like we should have called it something else because it was just, you know, the process of recording. Um, so uh, they, they pushed me out of the group, of course, within Vogue. And so a year after that was over, I think it was, let me see. I left the group in 97. So I had a few years actually between mm -hmm. that and Lucy Pearl. Lucy Pearl was in uh, 99, 2000. It was only one year, one deal, one album. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And that was what it was supposed to be from the beginning. Yeah. So we weren't going to record for more than that. That was our agreement with each other. And I, had a couple other deals on the table for myself as a solo artist. And my manager at the time, sorry, I'm trying to adjust this because the sun is going away. Yeah, I, I've heard some funny stories that you shared about the manager. Uh, yes. Oh you're the fire, right? Mills? Yes, come on. She was, she was, she was the bomb. What was it, Cassandra yes. Mills? Cassandra Mills, yes. Yeah. She was the bomb. She really was. I love her. Um, but she was too controlling because she was she was the head bitch in charge at she was running giant records yeah you know what i mean she was a black woman running a record company a well-to-do record company so she thought she could treat me like she did her employees when giant record folded she was started becoming a man she started managing artists and she contacted me and i was like heck yeah i, well, I would love you yes because i know you're powerful but with that power comes the need to control so yeah. um, she and I uh, would have it out all the time with stuff, my clothes, and she didn't like what I was wearing to meetings and stuff. And so we had a deal on the table. She had a deal on the table for me with Virgin Records and one with RCA. RCA, yeah. Bob Jamison flew us out. Um, I loved his deal much more than I did uh, Virgin. So I chose his deal. But we didn't sign any paperwork yet. This was literally a few days after we got back from New York. Raphael reached out to um, uh, to... Cassandra Mills and said, I have this group idea. I've known Dawn since we were kids. I would love for her to do this. I know she's in between um, deals right now. And I think she'd be great for this group idea that I have, this super group, you know? Yeah. Lucy, I mean, uh, Tribe Called Quest meets En Vogue meets Tony, 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 like come together, make this beautiful, oh, yeah. come on. And she told him, no, Dawn is not interested. How do you know Dawn is not interested if you haven't talked to Dawn? <laughs> right. That's what I'm saying, Latoya. I'm going to advise you. Just make decisions on your behalf. Don't, I mean, that's disrespectful to me. I think so. Yes, ma'am. That is exactly it. You said it. She made a decision on my behalf. And I'm laughing because when you were mentioning how she was trying to tell you how to dress, I was listening to another story you were talking about doing the video mm -hmm. with Nas and AZ and Foxy Brown and Hype Williams was Hype doing the Williams. introduction and, and demanded you wear green and was cussing cussing at you and telling you you were right. going to wear yes. green. He was and you had to let him know too, right? Like he was going to kiss me. He was that close. I was like, nope, and I'm not doing it. Nope, right. and I'm not, I don't wear green. I'm not wearing green today. You know what I mean? So right. now I probably yeah. would do it, but I was just like, you're not... For when you try to force me to do anything, I am such a rebel and that fire comes out and I am just like, no, I'm not doing it. Yeah. So yeah, with Cassandra it was the same way. Like, what do you mean you don't like my hair? I should have been like, okay, and we're going anyway. I'll be downstairs in the car. That's what I should have told her. You know what I mean? Cause yeah. she canceled the meeting with Virgin cause she didn't like my hair. Like what, really? Um. And the and next she, week when I came was... back after she, re she uh, Rescheduled the meeting for the next week and I came back. She's like, well, I mean, this is better. Um, I still don't like it, but <laughs> So by the time Raphael, uh, by the time I found out that she had told Raphael no, I was like, no, you bitch, you gotta go. You got I'm going to jail. <laughs> this is this is video on Instagram. And the girl says all the time, she's like, you know what, Karen? Because the room of the woman in the uh in the park who called the police on the guy for bird watching. And he had his dog, she had her dog with her and she was almost choking the dog because she was so angry. She called the police on him. This just happened last year. 
And so there was a woman that watched that video and she said, she says it all the time. I play it all the time because it's so funny. She's like, okay, Karen, if you were to meet me in the park and you call the police on me, I'm going to jail. I'm going yeah. to jail. I'm, Cause they call, they're going to find you and the dog dead. I'm, I'm going to jail. So that's why I always say I'm going to jail. But yeah, she didn't like what I wore the second time. And I was like, I'm not going home to change. That's not going to happen. So either we're going to close the meeting or you just cancel it all together. Um, and so because she told Raphael no, I was like, you're fired. You're fired. Yeah. And, and I was like, Raphael, oh my God. So what is up? Like, what is this, this idea you have? When he didn't have a name for it yet, um, but he just said, you know, I just think that this would be great. Our coming together would be like bomb. I'm like, I love love the idea because i didn't like the feeling of being outside of the group in vogue anyway i was scared to be on my own um yeah it was almost like the the nest you're leaving the nest and vogue felt like a family to me yeah. those were my sisters are supposed to be they didn't treat me like it but those are my sisters and i started with them in this professional world I, we started together and i don't want to be on my own and i'm it's ah i don't want to leave the group you know it was that for me so Rafi, I was like, uh, did I say yes too quick? Oh my gosh. Wow. So what are we going to call it? He's like, I don't know. I was thinking about all these names. Some, so soul for real or four times soul. He had all these soul names. Yeah. I, Raphael. I, so Raphael, yeah. I said, first of all, when you come up with a name for a group, you don't want to lock yourself into the soul thing because that'll put us in a category and it makes it like, we want people when they hear our music without seeing us first, and we want them to think, wow, this is pop crossover. This is good R&B. This is great this, this is great that. We don't want to be categorized. And a name can put yeah. you in a slot and keep you there, lock you in. So if you try to do something outside of that, like when we did Free Your Mind for In Vogue, that was cool because we were in Vogue. Our name was not locking us into being a soul group only. Yeah. yeah. Um, and it was really risky for us to even take a chance in doing a rock song in the middle of an R&B album. Like I thought that was genius of our producers. So yeah. I told him, let's not lock ourselves in, you know, by soul this and soul that. Um, and so he came back a few days later. He was like, what about Pearl? I'm sorry, what about Lucy? And I was like, eh. and me and Ali looked at each other. I was like, that sounds like a country Western artist. That sounds like an old country lady, country Western artist, singer. And then next day he came in with Lucy Pearl. And we were like, you know what? So I wrote it down in, in a list of other artists that are already out there. Incubus, Stained, all these different rock bands, Metallica, yeah. uh, Led Zeppelin. I just put it in there and we would just say it out loud. And that's how you do with names. Like you just walk around and randomly say Lucy Pearl. Yeah. And it started feeling right yeah. to us. Yeah, it did, it did. It's what I like about what Raphael did um, is that he put his own money into this project. But he still allow your Wait a minute, creative you input. Huh? What? Well, I what well, what I heard that is he pretty much funded Lucy Pearl's production. Is that really? wrong? No, I didn't know anything about that. Um, <laughs> you I, would know so better I, than me. <laughs> no, no, no. But I, I really don't. Actually, you and I are in the same spot on that because I don't know. I can't say for sure that he didn't. I just know that he didn't give me a huge advance at all. And maybe okay. that's why. Maybe it's because he was putting the money into uh, the music. But okay. I, my okay. studio was where we, I actually had a studio um, that I was uh, renting a studio on Hollywood Boulevard <clears throat> with my producers. And, and I let Raphael hear what we were doing. He was like, man, bring them in. Mm -hmm. Let them work on this album with us because I like their style. He liked what they were doing. So he was like, bring them in. Um, and so he wasn't paying us for our studio. And now that I think about it, I should have sued his ass to make sure that he did do that. Like, you guys are using our studio for free. This is our equipment. These are my producers, and you're using our studio for free. We were paying the rent for that place. Um, so, yeah, he didn't He didn't pay us for that. Uh, he didn't pay our producers to, to, you know what I mean? So I don't know where the money went, because you got to pay an engineer. But our, my producers were the engineer, and they were the producers of the record. So Raphael would play, like, it was Glenn and Bobby were the producers, and they were a Mexican guy, which was Glenn. I'm sorry, white guy, which was Glenn, and a Mexican guy, which was uh, um, Bobby Ozuna. And okay. Bobby would, he was a DJ. 
So he would bring in like all of these, um, the meters had these break beats. The meters were just a bunch of musicians back in the seventies that would come to get in the sixties, I want to say. Uh, Aretha Franklin's musicians, um, uh, uh, James Brown, Stax, all of these musicians from like Sam and Dave, you know, they would just come together and just play, you know what I mean? And play all, and so they had what they call break beats on this one album. And they would just play each, we had a turntable in the studio and everything. They would just go through the record and play each song. And we're like, okay, that sounds good. Or no, we don't like that. Play another one. And they play and we're like, okay, we would feel that. And Raphael would just pick up his bass and start playing bass lines. Yeah. And then the yeah. next day we would come in Latoya and it would be like the start. They would have started another track. Don't mess with my man. Or I can't stand your mother. Or la la la. Like it was it was that like genius of them to do that. So this was more Bobby and Glenn than Raphael and Ali. Okay. Okay. I got to give them credit because they were great. And then I had a girl with me um, named Monet and she's like a sister to me. And she, she and I were working before with the same team of guys. She and I were working on stuff for me before that. So we did yeah. a song called healing that she wrote on her own. And I recorded that later. I, I recorded that at that time. That's one of the songs that I played for Raphael. And that's why he was like, Oh my God, bring these guys in and bring that girl too, Monet. Yeah. So she helped me write the girl parts. I'm like, I can't stand your mother. Uh, you know. Um, yeah, I can't stand your mother. That was something else. <laughs> exactly, wasn't it crazy? Crazy. Raphael again, I love his, I love the way he thinks. Like he's creative that way. Who would do a He's a musical genius and you guys together were just perfect. I, I know that it was just, you went in with a one album deal and that was it. But you guys could have went on, and I know you said there was some little friction with Raphael not really liking the fact that you were getting a lot of the attention. Yeah, being you know the the woman singer in the group. Female. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That is so silly to me. Like he destroyed something for no reason. Let's just let's talk about it. Maybe we can tell the journalists when they're doing interviews with us. Like you guys, we can tell our manager to make sure that they tell each journalist ask the guys questions too. Because I am much bigger as far as uh, and Vogue is concerned. My group was much bigger than the Tonys. My group yes. was much bigger than uh, Tribe Called Quest in certain ways. But then when we got to Germany, Ali's group was bigger than both of ours. It was, you know, because hip hop is a culture in Germany. And uh, yeah. Ali was like, wow, I am so embarrassed that I don't know as much about my own group than you guys know about Tribe Called Quest. You know what I mean? So. Yeah. Yeah, it, it was really is sad that Raphael got jealous like that and and, yeah. and verbalized it. He verbalized it like it was embarrassing for him to do that with these journalists. Yeah, it made no sense. Do you? Did, but you said he verbalized. Do you? So you think he know he knew that there was an issue? Like he felt uneasy about the attention you were getting. He verbalized that. Actually said that. Oh gosh, yeah, Latoya. Yeah. Like I said, so two different instances that I can remember for sure. One was we were here in Vegas. We were I wasn't living here yet, but we were here in Vegas for the Billboard Awards at MGM. We were doing there's this gigantic room. It's almost like they took two conference rooms and opened up the walls because you yeah. they can do that. And every single table had a different record company. I'm sorry, a different radio station. And you would sit down and you would talk to Norway at this station. You would talk to Tennessee over here. You would talk to New York over there. You would talk to Chicago over there. Yeah. We would talk to, you know, Hawaii. And so we were waiting for our next, it was me. I was standing in the middle. Ali was standing to my right. We were just standing up against the wall, kind of waiting around mm -hmm. uh, for our manager to come back over and tell us who we were going to talk to next. And uh, uh, Rafael was standing to my left. Ali was standing to my right. And this guy named um, Lee Bailey comes walking over and he's smiling before he even gets to us. And he's an yeah. older man, right? He's got on a hat. It looks like he's going to safari. I don't know why he had this hat on, but he had on a hat <laughs> and his glasses. And he walks over to us and he takes out of he take out of his pocket. He takes this little dictaphone and he turns it on and he's walking and he's smiling. And, <laughs> and I was like, "Hey, Lee!" And he said, um, "Hey, y'all!" And he steps right in between me and Raphael, and he kind of squeezes in between us because Raphael wasn't gonna move. Why did Lee Bailey, you should have come this side because if you came on this side, you would have had a better chance. But Raphael said right then, he said, Excuse me. <laughs> exactly. He said, Excuse me. Don't you see I'm standing here? What the fuck? 
Latoya, it was all I could do. I was like, I told Ali, I looked at Ali and I said, we are done. We're already done before we get started. And Lee Bailey was like, he didn't even pay Raphael any mind. He said, well, everybody wants to stand next to Dawn. Dawn Robinson and Vogue. And and, and then he started, he, he pushed play, um, record on his little dictaphone. He said, so we have, you know, he started doing the interview and Raphael was over there somewhere. He walked away. Like you could tell that jealousy. Yeah. And I was like, wow. And um, so we did the interview anyway. And then uh, we were fast forward, maybe a few months later, we were in London for the first time. Yeah. Now, I had lost my house with Raphael because he told me when I signed to him, I don't have a lot of money up front, um, but whatever you need, I can find it. I can get it for you. You know, okay. I can't give you a huge advance, but, and I said, okay. I just thought it was a better situation because try conquest. Like, I, I, I'm listening. I just like that we both have ponytails, but I'm listening. I know. From the beginning. <laughs> I should have said it from the start. Um, yeah. But I just thought it was genius. So I'm going to do this anyway. And yeah. here you are. So here we are for the first time in London. And uh, we're sitting on the couch. Now, when you get overseas, they're going to do as many interviews with you as possible because they know they're not going to see you anytime in person anytime soon. Yeah. So we can do phoners over the phone, but they're like, we have them right here. Oh, my God. This is Ali, Shaheed Muhammad. This is Char Called Quest. This is Raphael from Tony's. Awesome. This is Vogue. The reason that Raphael had me in the group is because I brought a pop sensibility that he didn't have, or neither did Tribe Called Quest. Okay. Tony, Tony, Tony didn't have that, that crossover appeal. Yeah. So they weren't as well known overseas either. So when we're sitting there, of course, everybody's asking me all the questions. They know and you. After, after a while, Latoya, Raphael was like, okay. Uh, he was sitting back on the couch for a minute and he had his arm folded. And then after a while, he sat up and he said, excuse me, to the woman that was doing the interview. He said, excuse me. She said, yes. Um, he said, um, so Ali, now Ali again was sitting to my right and Raphael was sitting to my left. And Ali said, Raf, I'm sorry, I did it wrong. Raphael was sitting to my left, Ali was sitting to my right. And Raphael sat up and said, Raf, Ali and I have done a lot in our careers too. Like, don't you want to talk to us? What the fuck? And she said, yes, but Dawn has done a lot more. In her English accent, and I was like, "You did it very good. I liked it." Oh my god! Oh my god! Mm. I felt like I wanted to go under the couch and just crawl out of the room. <laughs> I really did because I was just embarrassed. But she told him off in a very nice English accent way. You know what I mean? Yes, but Dawn's yeah. done a lot more, and we didn't talk about it, which we should have. Again. Yeah. Raphael showed his jealousy and showed his ass. Ali could have said the same thing, but Ali was quiet. Like, it's all good. Because he knew there was an article. We, we went to Paris after that and at the airport. I found an article in English, um, but it said uh, Gwen Stefani. It was, um, ah, I want to say like either Rolling Stone magazine or something like that. Gwen Stefani said that the, her band had the same problem. They all started together. They all started, um, you know, as a garage band, no doubt. Yeah, in a garage band, they did. I exactly. love them, too. And the guys were pissed off because all of a sudden now they're asking only you to do the cover of Vogue magazine or or Elle magazine or whatever, you know, female uh, yeah. publication, and they don't want us. And she said, well, I am a girl. You guys are guys, and you're not going to ever be on the cover of Vogue magazine. When's the last time you saw a girl on the cover? I think that's how she put it. She said, yeah. it's not going to happen. They don't do that. So stop Bam. being jealous and let's get fucking paid. Is how she puts money. Get this paper. Get this bag. Today we would say right. that. But yeah, yeah, like, and I showed that to Raphael. He's like, yeah, I know, you know, but you know, this is my group, and you know, I started it with all of us to be. And I was like, Raphael, but we all are successful. Whatever attention I get brings focus to the whole group. Let's get paid. Yeah. Let's not destroy this. We have something so great happening right now. I said, you. And I'll never, this is now, by the time, by the time we had this conversation, we were in Amsterdam and I said, you have, are one of the only R&B artists that actually have a successful group or artists on that group. You're a producer. You have your own, your own, uh, Pookie Records. I'm signed to you. Ali is signed to you. Lucy Pearl belongs to you. You know what I mean? So you need to make sure that this is successful on your, uh, on your, right. um, on your logo. For your record company, Pookie Records, mm -hmm. like if we fail, it's gonna make you look bad. 
it, I'm here. I lost my house with you. You said that we were supposed yeah. to put out the album in June. Here we are in November and this shit is still not happening. You know, come on. And by the time we got to London, I remember being at the front desk at the hotel. It was called the Cost Hotel, C-O-S-T-E. I'm sorry. And we were in Paris by this time. Okay. And they sent over, um, they shipped us the, uh, the, uh, the mock-up for the album cover. Yeah. And we were all, they called me at the front desk, called me and said, um, the guys are down here. They want you to come down in his uh, French accent. Oh, he's come to uh, the front desk. Uh, we're here. The guys are here. I was like, oh, my God. So we still hadn't put up the album. We were looking at the cover to pick what we wanted on the cover. Oh, I like the logo here, but I think it's better in yellow. And that's what we ended up picking. So I don't know if you can see the album cover. Yes, right yeah. yeah. So you, we still haven't put this album out. And we're over here in London. And your house is in foreclosure. Thank you. It, it ended up in foreclosure because I lost yeah. my house. So you said that you have my back, though. Remember that conversation we had before I signed to you? Oh, so you signed me just to get me to say yes. But you really didn't mean that you'd have my back later. Because you're full of shit. Right now, I lost my house because of you, dude. How am I supposed to forgive you? And I was just telling, so now, I'm sorry to jump forward a little bit, but right now, I'm actually, so, okay. With Lucy Pearl, we had a band. Raphael's cousin, uh, Elijah, was in the band, right? And, and we called, he would say, my name is Elijah. Y'all call me Elijah. So we would call him that. We would laugh and crack up with him all the time. And he said, he just reached out to me recently, literally, like we talked the other day, we did a, a Facebook Live because we're going to start working together okay. again. Okay. Yes. Okay. So All right. Like, <laughs> it's like the band is together again, but it's not Raphael included. Raphael's not going to join? No. Heck okay. no. This is the thing. You never know. Well, because I'm finding out. So there's, there's a really beautiful um, documentary called Loyalty, No Loyalty. And it's Ali, it's um, Elijah put it together. He, he's the one who produced it. I'm sorry. Okay. Loyalty, no loyalty. Loyalty, no loyalty on YouTube. Okay. Um, and he talks a little bit about Lucy Pearl, but not very much. But he talked about how Raphael, even as cousins, blood brothers, like literally his mother, I think uh, Ali's father, Elijah's father, Elijah's mother, and Raphael's father are brother and sister. They're blood, mm -hmm. literally. Um, and Ravio had dogged them out over the years. So here he is on Lucy Pearl. He's doing the work with us as well. And he's like, wow, Ravio's still not paying me. So he reached out to me the other day and I was like, oh, okay, Elijah, you know, um, you didn't have my back then. You know, if, if we would have had each other's backs, we could have gotten paid. You guys stood behind Ravio because you thought he was right. And in the end, you found out that he was not right. I don't know how you thought he was going to be different than what you grew up with anyway. You grew up with Raphael doing And you've known him since you were 16, right? He, I've known him since 16, but he knew him before, at birth. Right, you know right. What I mean? So, but yeah, you're right. I have known him at 16. But at 16, he didn't do anything to me. You know what I mean? I had I had no reason to doubt him because he had never he had never showed his ass with me. Like, he never did anything business-wise to, um, to be shady. Yeah. So, yeah. I, I yeah. didn't think there was anything wrong with working with him. And... But, uh, what's his name? Uh, Elijah, you knew your, your cousin was faulty. You know what yeah. I mean? You knew what kind of person he was. So um, so he's like, Dawn, let's work on some stuff. Let's get out on the road. Let's do some uh, virtual shows together. And I was like, I am down. Are you kidding me? Like, because, and this is what I found out too, and I'm finding out even more um, in detail. But in the documentary, they talk about Jubu, who did a lot of the music. He okay. did um, Lay Your Head on My Pillow. He came up with the, Ooh, with the chord for that. Oh, my God, right? Huh. We would do a lot of those songs in concert, too. Oh, yeah. Lucy Pearl, yes. Cause Rafi, yeah. I love that. I, I was just telling somebody that. Like, I, when I go to a concert, if I'm coming to see you, Don, I expect for you to uh, sing someone else's cover. Like, that's the beauty exactly. of it, to hear all wow. this beautiful music coming out of your beautiful voice, whether oh you wrote gosh. it or, or, you know, sang it or not. It's, I love that. Oh, my goodness. That's the first time, literally, out of all these interviews that I've ever heard anyone say they expect other people to sing other people's music. That's I beautiful, do. LaToya. I get chills thinking about it because it, 
I love, I mean, that is a gift. Your voice, wow. oh my gosh. Oh my I don't goodness. know, God had other plans for me because I would be in somebody's juke joint right now with my little mask on singing. <laughs> but your voice is so beautiful. And to hear you sing some of my favorite songs that someone else wrote or sang oh. Oh out of your God. voice, that's a treat to me. That's a cherry on top. That is amazing. Thank you so much. I would think that people would want to hear the songs I did only. So I, because no. uh, sometimes I've done concerts and I, like one time uh, last year, let me just say it. I did um, Call Me by Blondie. Call me. Yeah. Oh, la, la. <laughs> That's the jam. And I was thinking that, you know, it was a gay pride and they were just like, Blondie. But they're like crickets. They were looking at me like, why are you doing this? Get back to the En Vogue stuff. So I was like, okay, y'all. <laughs> they all they know music. Uh, exactly. There were a few people at the comedy, oh, and it was fun. But I just wanted to throw something else in. It's like I've been, I've been doing these songs 30 years. I want to do something different. So yeah. I just threw that in. Um, and sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. So thank you for yeah. that. I will continue yeah. to I throw appreciate in it. other. Now, what happened also within Vogue is that we would do a medley. Ooh, the medley was. Um, um, Baby, 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 uh, oh, I uh, heard it through the grapevine was the first one. That was Cindy's song. And so we would, duh, 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 Oh, yeah, duh, there duh, you go. Duh, duh. And we would go down to the floor. We were winding up, winding yeah. up, winding up. That you was high. And we would yeah. do the dance steps and stuff. And then we would go into uh, Best of My Love. I would sing lead on that. Then we go into Tell Me Something Good. Maxine would sing Shaka Khan. We were doing, oh my God. We it, But we loved that section better than we loved our own stuff. That's that's what happens because we've been knowing yeah. these songs all our lives. So yeah, yeah, I don't mind singing Hold On and I don't mind singing Give Him Something You Can Feel. And those are great. But I also want to sing, you know, uh, uh, what was the one um, we would do? Uh, Tina Turner, um, um, Rolling, uh, Rolling. Oh yeah, oh yeah. You know, we she would do all the dance steps. Oh my God. And we were tired by the end of it. Terry was always like, you guys do not let the audience see you sweat. Look at them like, and give a bow and then turn around and be like, <sighs> <laughs> because we were out of breath. Of Cause we yeah. were doing all those steps. I'm like, da, 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 da. Oh my God. We were tired, but Terry was always like, always smile. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And then turn around to the to, to the back of the uh to the band and be like, <sighs> yes. You know what I mean? But yeah. So thank you for that. I am gonna throw in more songs from other people. I love it. I love it. Keep yes. on, keep it on. Thank well, you. Well, I'm I'm definitely looking forward to you and Elijah, you know, cooking oh up some God. good stuff. In the this kitchen. is just three days in the making. This is like four days in the making. Oh really? Just, oh my God. You oh, sent me some music. Exclusive in radio, you guys. Yes. Yes, I think you are the first one that I've mentioned it to because I've done two interviews since then, yeah. but I haven't mentioned it to them too okay, live. Right. Yes, exactly. Um, he sent me some tracks as well. So we're going to start working on my album. Um, and we also have, so when Raphael left the Tonys, this guy named William, who I have, to, I had to ask my mom the other day, how did we meet William again? Because I remember him in high school, but he didn't go to my high school. And I went to Oakland High and William and Raphael and Elijah and all of those guys went to Castlemont High. So it was a battle between Oakland, uh, band, our band, our school band, and Castlemont yeah. High School. But Castlemont okay. would win every time. Castlemont was like, they would have celebrities come watch them. That's how good they were. We could yeah. never compete. Oh, my God. So um, Raphael, I'm, I'm sorry, I knew William back then. But I was like, I didn't go to Castlemont High. So how did I know William? How, he used to come to our house and hang out. and. We were making, my mother said, when you talk to William, because I haven't talked to him in years, she said, when you talk to William, please remind him that we would have him, before he came in the front door, we would have him do Michael Jackson all the time. That sounds like a mama. Thriller, and he would do um, Beat It and all that stuff and do the moonwalk and all that stuff. Like, we would have him do it. And this was in high school. And we were cracking up the other day. I talked to William for the first time in years. So he took Raphael's place when Raphael left the Tonys. Wow, um, okay. Yeah, so he's been in the Tonys, what, 21 years now? Long, long, long time, 22 years. Um, he's going to be singing Raphael's parts. We're going to do the Lucy Pearl stuff, too, virtually. Okay. Yes, oh, I all can't of that. wait. I'm yes. looking forward to when this is all over, just being out, going to concerts. That's what I miss more than anything, concerts. Exactly. And, you know, I'm an old school head. 
Yeah. You know, I just love town. It's going to open love- up again. This too shall yeah. pass. They are not going to keep this shit shut down. You can't tell me that you can open up Costco and Walmart and all that stuff, but you're going to close down the little mom and pop stores yeah. or the casinos or, you know, uh, come on. So people yeah. are losing their jobs and they're losing their homes because they lose their jobs and can't work. No, God yeah. has to put an end to all this crap. It yeah. has to stop. Yeah. It, it will, this too shall pass. I think it's a trial and a test for sure. You yes. were talking about tours. I was thinking about um, another um, story you were telling about Luther Vandross calling the police. <laughs> You guys, you were touring with the we, we called him Loretta. Yes, we did. And we put that in uh, Vibe magazine. We did a whole article. And I think that's why he apologized to us because he knew we knew his secret, you know. Um, but he was mean. He was mean. But he was also very right about why he was being mean. We signed a contract with him before we did the tour that we yes. could not wear anything that has sparkle or shine on it that picked up light. You know what I mean? Or sparkle or anything like that, that we could not wear red, white, blue, or black. Okay. Not black? Not black. Yeah, because that was his color, you know? So oh, we signed the contract. Yeah. I thought um, he was wanting you guys to be incognito, so black would have been perfect. Exactly, for him. Yeah. Well, for us, what do you mean? For if he, because in my mind, without, he didn't want you wearing things that would attract attention to you. That's how I envision it, the sparkle. Right, but black makes you look thinner. Okay. You know what That's I mean? True. It makes you look sick. And we were thin anyway. We weren't big girls. We never have. Yeah. Um, so I don't know why he didn't want us to wear black. I think because the black, he would, put, he would have their gowns, the gowns for the girls, um, Lisa Fisher and uh, uh, Ava Cherry. He would have their gowns all embellished with all these diamonds and, and um, you know, rubies and not real yeah. ones, but you know what I mean? He would have them be dazzled. <laughs> so. Yeah. He didn't want us wearing anything that picked a boy. So midway through the tour, we we took down most of the equipment because he wouldn't let our band um, get off the stage. He made our band stay, and then we had a theater in the round, and the theater, the stage was really small compared to a regular stage where you have all the stage back and forth. He made us keep our band on the stage, and it was a cumbersome. It was an eyesore. And the fans were complaining and they didn't like our clothes because we were wearing orange and brown and yellow. Yeah. Come on, pink. Like, it's, you, you can't. No, all these ugly colors. So we were getting bad write-ups. So we sent half of our band, we sent them home and we only kept the drummer, the keyboard player, and a guitar player, uh, a bass player. And we sent the guitar player home and another keyboard player, we sent them home. And then yeah. we scaled down uh, our equipment and we recorded our whole show, whole show, and whatever city we got to, maybe Chicago, we went in a studio and we recorded the whole band. We were gonna make it work. Cause if yeah. we can't go home, we're in a contract. We're gonna make this tour work. So we took home and we scaled down all the equipment on stage. So all you saw was a drummer and one or two pieces. You saw a guitar player and his own, that only his guitar. Cause he wasn't really playing. Remember yeah. we recorded everything. So okay. yeah, okay. yeah. Um, and then uh, Raf- I mean Raphael, uh, Luther Vandross got pissed off at us and had us in a meeting and said, he pointed at each one of us at the table. And he looked us right in the eyes and he was saying, your, your manager got you in this tour. You, he got you on this tour. Yes. He messed you guys up. I didn't do this to you guys. You signed a contract. And he said, and I am a girl group. So I don't want y'all wearing the stuff that I wear. I don't want you. Did he said he's a girl group? Yes, ma'am. Okay. He said he's and a we, was, we were sitting there and Terry was sitting right next to me and she was digging into my leg under the table. He couldn't see her, but he was like, she was like, oh my God, he just said he's a girl group. Oh my God. Luther just said, like he outed himself. Yeah. I Rest in peace, Luther. Rest yeah. in peace. But I just thought that was funny. I was like, he called the police? What the, what, what, what happened? Call the police <laughs> on us because we walked, we wanted, we were going to walk past his door and go to the stage to do our show. And yeah. If the stage is here, and this is if this is our dressing room, and this is Luther's dressing room, we have to walk out of our dressing room past his door to get to the stage. That's yeah. how close it was. It was right there, and he didn't want us to leave out of our door. He wanted us to take a cart and have a golf cart because that's what they, it was a coliseum, so it was huge. And they had one of those golf carts, and he wanted them to drive us around to the front door of the stage, past all the fans that are at the concession stands. By the way. <laughs> and walk to the stage and then walk down the steps past the audience. Hey, y'all, how you doing? Hey, how's it going? (laughs) 
and walk to the stage and do our show. Are you kidding me? When we could just walk uh -huh. past his door and go to the stage and come through the back of the stage the way you're supposed to come out on stage anyway. Are you kidding me? Oh my gosh. And, I'm looking. Um, I'm looking forward to the book. I'm looking forward to the book. It was. It's so much more than that. Yeah, I'm. I'm leaving out a whole lot. You're absolutely right. But we learned so much from him, though. When I tell you, Latoya, every night we sat there like little girls and just watched. Wow. Oh my God. Here and now, I promise yes. to love. Oh my gosh. I'll sing for free. I'll sing background for you. Oh my God. Beautiful. Oh, that, that, that gift. Oh my gosh. He was just amazing. One of a kind. I wish One he would have just talked to us and was, I wish he would have been, you know, nicer. Uh, he was just a stickler. He stuck to his word. I meant it. You guys signed a contract. He was about, you know, his contract. Yeah. What I was pissed off about, because I told the girls when we left out of there, we got a chance to talk about Because, you know, you don't start talking until you get away from it with an earshot of the person you just met with. And by the time we got to our dressing room, I said, you guys, you know what? Luther is absolutely right. He's right. And I'm pissed off because our manager is, David, you got us on this tour. You know, yeah. Cindy was pregnant. Cindy was six months when we first started that tour. Who wants to be on the road at six months? Nobody. If nobody. Okay. I'm not, I've never been pregnant, but I can imagine what that's like. You want to be home and you don't want to be on the road living out of a tour bus, living out of a suitcase. You know, that's what we had a tour bus. And she wanted to be home with her husband. Yeah. And here she yeah. is out on the road with us. She stayed until six months and she was like, you guys, I got to go. I want to be, I want to, her husband was decorating the, uh, the baby, uh, what do you call it? Um, the nursery himself. She's like, no, I gotta go home. Yeah, I don't blame her. Yeah, I have a fellow on Facebook who said maybe by girl group he meant he appeals to women. No, no. Yeah. Speaking no. of women, he, he met because he was standing there one time, and I was standing with him. I was standing with my ex boyfriend, and we were talking. And I said, well, I'll meet you on the bus. I was doing something because he had he was our liaison, so he would set up our dressing room and all that stuff. And and. Oh, okay. uh, yeah, so um, I brought him on the road, but he was working all the time. We hardly saw each other until we went to bed that night. He would be in my hotel room, but that was it. Come the morning time, he would take our, our, our uh, uniforms and take them to get them clean. Like, he would leave and go do his job. Because I told him, you can't be laying up underneath me just because you're my boyfriend. I don't want the girls being pissed at me because you're being... You did try. <laughs> she said she tried. I'm sorry. She tried. <laughs> no, he meant guy. So he there was a woman, a female... Luther was coming out onto the stage and I was telling my boy, I'll meet you at the bus and I'll take your stuff with me, but I, I, I need to go out there to do something. I forgot what. And he said, okay. And we stepped back because um, Luther Rundros's, uh people were bringing Luther Rundros out to the stage, his, his uh, security. And there was a female fan standing there and she said, oh my God, Luther, I love you. And she went to grab him and he said, no, don't put your hands on me. Don't touch me. And she was like, but I love you, Luther. Oh my God. Can I just get a picture? He said, I don't do pictures. Now, fast forward a few months later, there was there were a couple of guys standing backstage, and he said, oh, yeah, I'll take a picture with you. And he put his arm around the guy and took a picture with the fan. Yeah. He didn't like female fans. He, he liked male fans. Thank you. Hello. That's the fact. Yeah. He's a girl yeah. group. And, and so that's what he said. He didn't clarify and say, um, I appeal to women, because that's usually what happens. And, you, and that fan just now was right. Um, you do a tour with male artists because they bring in the females and we bring, as being females, bring in the men. Yeah. But that's not what he meant. No. He said, I am yeah. a girl group. Thank I you. am a girl group. And he did not clarify meaning I bring in females. That's not even, that doesn't even mean that. <laughs> Think about it. I, I am a girl group. He, he said it very yeah, clearly. I got it. I, she, she tried. <laughs> yeah, she did. She did. I know. <laughs> Um, he tried. And he and he meant it and said it twice. He repeated it. I am a girl group. I yeah. am a girl group. And I want my girls to look good on here on the stage. And we are the ones who want that uh, attention. We want the light to pick up all our embellishments on our clothes. Yeah. You know? Okay, Mr. Luther. So we call them uh, Loretta. Uh, what was it? Loretta on the road. Loretta. Because yes, we had a name for him. We said that in Vibe Magazine, too. Oh, man, we did. Wow. And our I'm band sorry. made up these stickers just before we left the road. And if he was alive now, he'd be like, that's where them damn stickers came from. But our band was like, because he was so mean to our band and our crew. 
Um, and the crew is like the crew sticks with each other because all the crew helps each other. Put up the stages for the artists, tear them down, and put them up in the next city together. The crew yeah. is always like you don't separate the crew from each other. Yeah. The crew is the first one to get in town and the last ones to leave. After we leave, the crew is like helping tear down each other's stages and all that stuff. So they leave, oh man, sometimes three hours after us. And mm -hmm. we're already three hours on the road and they're still stuck there in the city trying to get out of town. Sometimes there's bad weather. I mean, the crew works the hardest to me. They, we don't give them enough love. The crew is the one that makes all those shows happen. Um, even more than the band. The band does too, but the band leaves with us. The crew has to stay and help the other crew tear yeah. down. So he separated our crew and we came through the hallways of one of these venues and they had curtains. Mm. We, they had, Luther Vandross told them to put the, our crew in the hallway and make them eat like little kids behind these curtains. So they had tables in the hallways and, and we opened the curtain. We were like, oh my God, you guys are eating in the hallway? And they were like, yep. And we were like, Cindy was like, oh no, oh hell no. And she's big and pregnant. She stands up and she's walking around and looking for Luther Vandross and his, uh, we had a, um, a tour, uh, the tour, not a tour manager. Um, oh my gosh, Jeff Sharp is his name, but he had a title. He's the yeah, one who set the whole tour up for us. Yeah, so they were known. Oh, yeah, kind of like a project manager, tour manager. Well, no, we had a tour manager, but that's not who we talked to. We okay. talked to the guy who was the one who put the tour together. Um, okay. An agent. He's an agent. And okay. uh, we were looking for, and we kept going in all these rooms, and we were like, Cindy, slow down, because she was ahead of us. Oh, no, hell no. You're not going to do this to our band. Um, excuse me, uh, is he in here? No, Jeff Sharp, where's he at? And she finally found him, and she said, Jeff, you have our band in the hallway looking, eating like little children. She was almost in tears. She was pissed off because our band works hard. Yeah. Oh, she was not having it. She was like, no, you will not do that to our band. Um, and uh, so the next city, they were eating with the other band in the room, in the cafeteria where they were supposed to be. You know what I mean? You could take it out on us, but you don't take it out on the band because those guys work hard. You don't do that. Yeah. You don't do that. Yeah. So she was like, no. She straightened them out, though. She got them straight. Amazing, amazing. I think that's an amazing story. Um, I know this is something you probably would like to forget about, but just, you know, from mentioning, <laughs> I remember seeing you on R&B Divas. Um, yes, that's okay. Was that 2013? Yep. Yeah. And you just did one season, that was it. That's it, that is all. Are you kidding? My, my attorney had me out of this so quick. Um, when they first signed me, first they wanted me for LA, sorry, Atlanta Divas. And I said, well, I don't represent Atlanta and I don't want to move. I live in LA, so no thank you, but I appreciate you asking. And then seven months later or so, uh, they came to me and said, um, okay, what about doing LA Divas? And I said, cool. Um, well, no, at first I said, let me pray on that. Cause I, I'm not into reality shows. I just have to say, I'm just not. I think they're catty. I think they're messy. I think it's ridiculousness for no reason. I think there's so many stories that can be told about people's lives. We all have a story. Mm -hmm. And I think that's why people want to watch these reality shows thinking that the stuff they're watching is real, but it's not. I don't even know why they call it reality. They call, they need to call it relatable TV. <laughs> yeah, it's they, it's, they say it's unscripted, but to some degree it is scripted nowadays. It's very scripted. It is, they, they lead and they guide it. They don't yeah, script it right. per se and say, it's say true. this, but they'll trigger some things. Oh. <laughs> So, you know, um, she was talking to your husband today and they yeah. had some kind of like, oh, it looked like something was going on over there. So they do that kind of stuff and they trigger yeah, drop stuff. you up in the wrong hood or something like that, you know? Exactly. That's right. And so they, they trigger us to have these nasty conversations with each other and they love for us to go at it with each other and fight. And mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, no, I told you guys before I signed that I am not doing messy. I don't dig that shit. And our producer of the show, his name is Leslie or was. He's still alive, but he he's no longer my manager. He yeah. said, Dawn, you have to think, you should have known what kind of show you were getting into because we, we do Atlanta Housewives too. And I said, no, Leslie, you assume that because I'm a black woman, I watch that kind of mess. I don't do that. And I'm not putting them down. I'm just saying, I don't, I don't dummy myself down to watch that kind of TV. Um, I was hoping that when I did see the very first episode when it aired, or the very first, um, when it premiered, 
I watched mm. the very first one and I said, I love this show. And then they started getting messy with each other. And I'm like, no, that's too bad because they're going yeah. at it with each other and it doesn't make any sense. Why can't we as black women lift each other up? Why do we have to put each other down? I don't get that. And then I asked him, I said, so while we're, we're talking, I said, there's shows that come on that are like, um, you know, at the time there was Pilar and uh, what's his name? The football player. Um, um, I'm attempting. Um, uh, a black think. man and him and his wife had a show. His, name, his wife's name is Pilar. Sanders, um, who else had a show? Um, Somebody in the chat might know. I can't do yeah, that. Yeah, exactly. So I was like, well, why a show like that does well? And, you know, you got Family Jewels where you have, uh, what's his name? From Kiss. Um, you got all of these shows that, that he said, because there's kids on those shows and we don't want to exploit those kids. You know, and I said, so you can exploit black women because what? We don't have lives that matter. A lot of these women on the show, I don't have kids, but they have kids. So what about their kids? You don't care that they have children and, and husbands or boyfriends that love them or that their mothers and fathers will see the show. Like you want us to turn on each other and have this animosity. He said, well, you can do that. <clears throat> How about you do that on camera? And then off camera, you can go ahead and uh, laugh about it and go have drinks or something. I said, because I told you guys, the very first meeting we had, when we first met each other, I told you that I don't do messy. And yeah. that we, as Black women, we have a responsibility for young Black women that are watching us. So I'm not going to do that. And you guys said, oh, no, we don't want a messy show. We're never going to do that with you guys anyway, because uh, we want a different type of show. That's what you said, Leslie. And he said, well, you, and he pointed at me just like this, you, Dawn Robinson, better um, make a decision and decide if you want to be on a show like this. And I said, I would have done that had you told me up front and been honest with me about the show that you were fucking doing. I would, yeah. have been, I would have said right then, I don't want to be a part of this shit, but you told me that you were going to do a different type of show. So yeah. I'm not going to do that. Yeah. yeah. And it's unfortunate with these reality shows because that's not, you know, every once in a while, yeah, you might want to see somebody, you know, read somebody their rights. But as grown women, we're not looking to see grown women fight. You know, no. when I watch these reality shows, I, I want to be inspired because you have all these businesses and you're juggling your life and your family and you're showing us how you can still live and be successful. You know, I'm not looking to just see fighting and big wigs exactly. and big lashes, yeah. you know, well, big purses. You know what I'm saying? And, and not only that, to add to what you're saying, Latoya, my thing is my life is not a reality show. My life is for real. It is hard enough yeah. to just be an artist trying to get my game back on, to get yeah. someone to pay attention to me, to get a manager. Do you know I've had so many doors close in my face? And this is what I said in that meeting, too. I, I have tried to reach out to... Benny Medina for management. I've tried to reach out to um, Irving Azoff for management. All of these big people, and they just like, oh no, we're not taking new artists right now. Or, um, you know, the guy who was managing, um, ooh, what's his name? Uh, Justin Bieber. And I know that's oh. a younger artist, but still, he has artists that are older. So I, I've been over the years, and I'm not talking now, I'm talking about when I was doing the reality show. I've, I said, over the years, I've had the door, door closed in my face because I couldn't get my life back together. Yeah. And I need to tell those stories. That's, that's hardship. That is some bullshit. That is, mm -hmm. me, it's not messy, it's just my life. I don't need yeah. to make up drama because right. my life is right. drama already. Um, trying to pay the bills without having money. I haven't had a show in years. Um, and at that time, I was saying this then in that meeting, I said, um, I've been on for in Vogue in 90, since 97, mm -hmm. and it's been really hard for me to get work. That's drama. Dating a white man. I was dating a white guy at the time. I want to talk oh. about that stuff because why do we as black people have a problem when they see a black woman or a black man dating a white girl or a white guy? Why, why do we have a problem with that? Let's talk about those issues. We need to deal with that stuff because it does happen. And I get whispers. I hear people, oh, she's dating a white man. Well, that's my business. Yeah. That's who I choose to be with. That's my business. And I do date black women, men too. I don't exclusively date white men. So let's talk about those things because it is out there. And we do have those conversations with each other, but not in front of the camera. Let's right. talk about that. Um, Shantae Moore had had a situation where uh, the guy was had his hand around her neck and was choking her or something like that. Her mother walked in and said, well, Shantae, what did you do to him? Wait a minute. That's abuse, mom. You're walking in and he's choking me out. Like, right. let's talk about that because young women 
there's a young woman somewhere who's having that same issue and doesn't know yeah. how to get out of her abusive relationship. So let's deal with that. That's reality. But you guys want me to sit here and talk about how I can't stand Kelly because she did this and this was that. It is all of this. And uh, no, 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 no. See, I don't live like that. I don't understand yeah. why you guys want one. I, the, my last day of filming, literally, I hadn't been there for four months prior. So when I left that scene that last time, hold on, I'm sorry. When I left that scene that day, I think it was with, it was with um, uh, Little Mo. And she was all in my face and don't, don't yeah, get she hurt. Was oh my God. I was like, okay, really? You're going to fight me because I'm, I'm not going to go against Kelly? All of us agreed with her show when we were there. We agreed with Not Your Mama's Monologues. And you're standing in my face like you're going to fight me? I wish you would. Okay. I, and when I left there that day, I was like, no, I don't back down from anybody, but I'm also not going to stand here and fight just to give you guys ratings. So you finally almost got the black girls to fight. This is what you guys wanted. This is what the cast wanted. You guys, I'm sorry, the crew, you, the Think yeah. Factory Media, this is what you guys wanted. And it's unfortunate because you got, I'm the only one here who can actually call themselves a diva because of Funky Divas. That's why, that's how I introduced myself when we mm -hmm. introduced ourselves for a cast as a cast. I said, my name is Dawn Robinson. I'm a former uh, former funky diva, soon to be R&B diva. And everybody was like, ah, yay. <laughs> but it's true. And it's like, we, we are queens. We never should be swinging on each other or fighting for any reason. And right. what you're telling me, Leslie, is that we can go and laugh about this after the fact and have drinks and laugh about it and have dinner. But what you don't understand is that young black girls who are watching this think this shit is real. Right. They think that yeah, we're eating from the glass. Exactly. One girl on one of the shows, I forgot what it was, she got stitches in her head for real because the girl threw a glass at her. Because you get See, I would, I would sue the production. I would sue the everybody city. involved. Thank you. I would sue everybody. I'm suing yeah. the whole cast. I'm suing the whole crew. Everybody's getting sued. Yeah. That's but there's no pattern. reason that that should happen. And you guys think we're going to turn. He said, well, you need to turn up. I said, I don't turn up. See, right. you're getting all these terms, these black terms, because you think as a white man, you're, you're watching and listening to all the street talk. I come from class, and Vogue is a classy group. I was raised with yes. class. My mother raised me with class. I'm not about to start fighting these women now to make right. ratings. And I told them, I said, when I stood in front of that, um, we did a scene where we married ourselves. I don't know if you remember that. We came to Vegas. We all picked out wedding dresses. And do you know that when we got to the chapel, they didn't have a dress for Kelly Price. Kelly Price is a big girl. Yes. She said, and she was yelling and screaming on set. She said, I am a size 20 whatever. I forgot what it was. She said, and I, you guys knew when you picked these dresses out that there was nothing here for me. And, and one of the producers was like, well, we thought that that would be good for camera. Like it would be funny to laugh at and kind of let people know, do you see this dress? Um, there's not these little she, she, she said, you know what? And she was crying. She said, This my life is not a fucking joke. Yeah. My life is not a uh, a rating. And, and I, they did I that trying, just to exploit her. I was standing there because I was gonna go through the dresses too, and I was like, No, nope, I'm not doing this today. Because I knew her pain. That is the pain that we're talking about. That's the real stuff. You right. guys want to make it a joke, and it's not. Right. Um, and she, she said, I've been all my life, I've been a big girl. I was a big baby. I was a big little girl growing up. Elementary school, I was big. And it just never got better from there. And you guys want to laugh at this shit? Like it's a fucking joke? It's not. And she said, and I'm not doing it. She went out to the car and her husband had to talk her into coming back in and do it. She did the scene in her uh, the dress that she had on that day. Yeah. And they never filmed it. They never filmed her. They filmed her part, but they didn't film any of the prior stuff, you know, because she said, I don't want this on camera. Turn those fucking cameras off. Yeah. So a lot of this stuff that everybody thinks is turning up. Oh, my God, it's ratings. Go, oh, bitch. She went in on her. No, right. I don't turn up. I don't sip tea. <laughs> I don't have to because my life is no. already that already. It's like. And it's, it's okay. Exactly. It's okay. Exactly. okay. Right. So, yeah, that's, that's why I didn't want to do the reality show. It's too bad yeah. because. I had lots of stories that could have been told. They wanted us to always go sit, girl, yeah. let's have drinks. Girl, let's go to dinner. So what happened? Oh, she got in your face? That shit. No, no. Was she okay that day? They had one scene where Claudette's daughter supposedly got burns. And now I know that it wasn't real. Because she said she was reaching for the iron 
or reaching for something on the top shelf and she had just put the iron up mm -hmm. and the iron fell on her and the water that was in the iron scorched her face or something like that. I was like, why don't you guys let us go to the hospital? We can support Claudette. Me and Kelly both told production that. That's one of those scenes where we can all be there for each other. The six right. of us like there for her. No, we don't, you know, that's no. Claudette wants to be private. I was like, no, Claudette doesn't know anything about private. It. <laughs> private. And when we told her later, she was like, I didn't even know you guys asked to come down there. Like, oh my God. But I don't think her daughter was really hurt. They were just trying to keep us away from each other. You don't, they don't want the camaraderie. They don't want the kindness and the love. They want us to turn up and turn out. And I'm like, wow. Yeah. That. You said it best, turn up and turn out. Exactly. You got a lot of fans in the chat and took a few questions. Um, you know, a lot of people, a lot of love, a lot of support, you know, mm -hmm. People are saying some of the same the same thing I say about you that you're so down to earth. Um, oh, you're so thank candid, you guys. Wow. You're open, you're sweet. I don't know how thank you, you know so much, people Victoria. would even try to taint your name in any way. Um, because you know, did you freeze? I think you froze. She might come back. So yeah, I don't understand how anybody would want to taint her name. Don is just, you know, down to earth. She's real. She she says what what's on her mind. And you know, sometimes people get bad labels for speaking up for themselves. You know, they get called things they shouldn't necessarily uh, be called because they stick stick up for themselves. But then what ends up happening later in life is a lot of us benefit. A lot of us benefit from, you know, the fact that. Somebody spoke up for us. Okay, you back with us? Yes, I am. Okay. So, yeah, I would, you know, just add into it that, yeah, you know, I, I can't see how anybody would say anything negative about you. I mean, you just sweet. Your energy is just. Thank you so oh, much. No, you know? this is, and this is who I've always been. But I think what happened was I ended up in a, in a, in a career in um, a world of darkness and people that are not, their agenda is to take you down, tear you down. I mean, you've seen it over the years where you have a couple that everybody loves. They just start dating and everybody's like, oh my gosh, they're the new Camelot. Most times with white people. But you know, they're the new, we love them together. And then all of a sudden, like a year later, the press is tearing them down and trying to destroy their relationship. She cheated on him. And they've got them in the National Enquirer with this picture where he's talking to a woman. It's really just a cast member on set. And they're making it seem like he was trying to kiss her or something, you know. They love to build you up to tear you down. And because I yeah. have I have a kind nature, I have uh I have God around me. Mm -hmm. My spirit is light and I love being who I am. And because yeah. I am kind, and I and I'm not saying that to pat myself on the back, I'm saying it because I see people like me as a threat. Yeah. Oh, so you're not gonna turn up? Oh, you're not gonna be that bitch? Oh, you're not gonna be like, you know, I'm not, and I never will be. But because of that, how is it said? I think. Recently, I saw, and I see it all the time, actually. But they say your demon, your um, your angels or your kindness messes with the demons inside people sometimes. Sure, and they don't like I believe that. that. Yeah, For sure. So that, yeah, I think that's what I think that's the problem, and it's all the time. And I'm just like, you guys always try to snare me up. You always try to catch me in your snare. What what is the saying? Um, all what a tangled web we weave when we try to deceive people. You always get caught up in your own shit when you try to do something to hurt someone else on purpose. Mm -hmm. It never goes well. That is yeah. karma. It yeah, gets definitely started. karma. Exactly. And so that is why I think now this is my time to get out all the truth about what really happened with me. Because for a long time, Cindy was, I mean, Maxine was like, Dawn, we told everybody that you were a diva. That's why yep. you left the group. We put that rumor out there that you were just being a Hard diva. to work with. And, and I am. I am very hard to work with. You know why? Because okay. I won't tolerate people stepping all over me. I won't tolerate two cents. That's why I'm hard to work with. She That's just right. won't back down. She just won't sit down and deal with it like the other ones are okay. The other ones are okay with getting paid two pennies a record. Why can't Dawn be? Because I'm not. That's why. And I never will be. And Cindy and Terry and Maxine deserved more too. But they didn't know it. And they weren't yeah. willing to speak up for it. So I'm not just going to sit there and act like it's okay for me. It's never okay for me. Ever. Do you you think actress Monique, uh, comedian Monique and actress, you think she's 
getting a bad rap too? I don't know her whole story, bless her heart. I really don't know. Like, is that what she's saying though? Well, I mean, if you look at the consensus, a lot of people are saying that, you know, she's, you know, you, you use that term again, hard to work difficult. with. Difficult. Yeah, difficult. There it is. Difficult. Yeah. And, you know, she her negotiation tactics are a little different from probably what they're used to, obviously. Absolutely. Because I did see that one. Now that part I can speak on because I saw that. She was saying that she's not getting as much, she's not getting paid as much as one of the male actors and she's yeah. bigger than the male actor that they're, you know, I would be speaking up too. Are you yeah. kidding me? You're gonna yeah. give. You're gonna pay me what I'm worth. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm not gonna yeah. sit here and tolerate that. Are you kidding? Yeah. No. Yeah. But it, I just love your peaceful spirit. I know another thing you mentioned was that um one of Thank your favorite you. verses or um books in the Bible is Job's. Job's yeah. Job's. Yeah. You're, you're um, really studying. Oh, yeah. I, love I, I just love so much about you. You just, oh. I just love it. I mean, I go back to the beginning of the show when I mentioned that, you know, this isn't a, a huge platform. I don't have a whole lot of followers, That's but when right. I reached out to you, you didn't hesitate to respond and That's you just made me was. feel very welcome, you know? Right. Yes. And, and you are, come on. I mean, it, this, this, that doesn't matter to me. Like I said, you have, if you have 10 people, if you have two people, if you have a thousand, if you have a million, you have people and all those yeah. people know who I am. And through you, through yes. your platform, are seeing me again for the first time in a long time. So I'm grateful for yes. that. Your and they're excited is, to see you. It, and your platform is just as, as exciting to me as me being on it for you. So it's both ways. It's, it's give you. and take. Thank and you. I do appreciate you. Um, yeah. So, yeah, when pe when you are a whistleblower, when you stand up for yourself in any kind of way, you are... The people, uh, certain people, I should say, look at you as a problem. They were like, we got to get rid of this bitch because she's getting ready to talk to Sydney, Terry, and Maxine and wake them up yeah. about the fact that they have two pennies a record. Mm -hmm. So we got to get rid of Dawn. They just little do they know, without me, the group is going to fail. Yeah. First of all, because of your karma and the way you guys are getting rid of me, wrongful termination. You're getting rid of me for no reason. You're not getting rid of Terry. She did a solo album too. Okay. So yeah, somebody yeah. said in the chat they wanted you guys to come back. They dropped Terry's project and wanted you guys to come back and do a group project because Terry's album wasn't doing well. That was their um take from that. They wanted us to come together and do what? They um when Terry had her solo album, they came mm -hmm. up with an idea for you guys to come back as a group. And someone yeah. had mentioned in the comments that they did that because possibly Terry's album wasn't doing as well as they expected. They thought it they could take it. off. Yeah. And that is, that's what Sylvia told me on the phone. She really did. But my thing was, you still said that I could do a solo album. Give me the same chance to see if my album is going to succeed like you did Terry's. Maybe Terry's album's not succeeding because you're not putting enough money behind it. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, um, yeah, so it could have been that. I'm not giving Terry's album an excuse. I didn't love her album, but I did like her first single. Whatever. Mm -hmm. Like I told you, yeah. I thought it was a yeah, beautiful was song. Nice. So, um yeah, so it wasn't fair to me that you're going to treat me like you're treating Terry. Just because her solo album didn't do well doesn't mean mine might not. You know, right. you shouldn't have told me that you were going to do that. You should have taken me seriously. And the way she did it was like, okay, we're just going to pull you out of the studio right now. She didn't give it like, Dawn, I'm so sorry, but we got to pull you out like right now. And, I'm, you know, yeah. we're going to get back to it. I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, we're going to give yeah. you just as much attention. If she would have done that, I would have been like, okay. Oh, I hate this because I'm in the middle of some really great material that to this day, I'm going to put it out one day because it's such a great I, album. I, I never wait. put it out. Yeah. I can't wait. Thank I'm you. I'm so looking forward to it. I mean, you got a fans us and then you have those who have, have left us like Aaliyah. You know, she she spoke with you saying that, yeah, that you were she she you were her favorite. Basically, she was exactly. seeing your part in the uh, in the involved group. So, yeah, you're respected from those yes, who are here now. Those are the past. Highly respected. It's just, it's so amazing to me that our music and our legacy after all these years has been so indelible. Like people still love us this much. It's really great. Yeah. And I'm taking this platform, this Envo platform and this Lucy yeah. Pro platform, and I'm building on that. So yes. I can finally get my just due. Like I helped them build those names and then never got to benefit from them. So now it's like, no, God is giving back tenfold what was taken from me. And I'm just yeah. grateful. I really am. And speaking of building, I know you mentioned crowdfunding. I've never, the only way that I relate that term was into politics. So when I heard you use it, I said, oh, so 
So you can do this yeah. any kind of way. And I like the idea oh, of what yeah. you're doing with the crowdfunding. I know you're planning to do You haven't decided yet. No, no, no. Want. Actually, no, I, I decided not to do that because I got oh. I ended up with an investor situation now. So I don't okay. have to do that. But yeah, crowdfunding is amazing. Um, Tribe Call, I'm sorry, not Tribe Call Quest. What's their names? Um, uh, Roots. Um, the roots did it. The roots did it. Yep, okay. the roots. They the sure roots. did. I think I might have talked about that in an interview. The roots did it. Um, a, a lot of artists have done it over the years. Uh, Whoopi Goldberg did it. Um, the guy, what's his name? All these actors. I'm like, okay, yeah. these are huge actors. They're not no small. They did it too. So, um, no. yeah. So I was like, okay, let me get into this. But I'm not going to do that now. I, I've, I've gone in a different direction. It's a little bit stressful to have to do that because I got to ask fans for money and it still feels weird to me. Yeah, yeah, so, I understand. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But I'm still like, okay, here's my cash app at the same time. But not, I was asking for, I think it was going to be, my campaign manager was like, okay, you should do at least a million. And I'm like, I can't do it. That's just a lot of money. Why not? Why not? You have some supporters out there. You, you know, know, they want to see you win. There's a lot I of us that want to see you win. Well, this is the other thing too. With one of the campaigns, if you don't make your quota, so if you make nine hundred thousand, you don't get quite to a million. They won't uh -huh. give you your money. Where's the money oh, yeah. then? They give it back to the people. They don't give oh. you. I'm like Kickstarter. I think it's Kickstarter that does that. Uh, Indiegogo will give you your money. The other one does not. Oh, um, that's something. Yeah, know. GoFundMe will give you your money. So okay. I was like, I do not. First of all, I'm scared, and I don't want to fail in front of the world too. Yeah. I think that's probably yeah. you know more of it than anything. So now, yeah, but if they want to help me out now, it's cool. They can come to the cash app and yeah. do that. Yes. That, and that's just the meantime. Like I said, I have the investors, but we're working out the paperwork and all that stuff. Yeah. And really the money for, from the investor situation is going to my album. It goes to recording right. um, musicians, producers has got to pay for uh, the engineer at the studio, all that kind of stuff. So, yeah. um, it's not going to be used for frivolous things like shoes and buying clothes and getting my hair done. Cause I can't do that. I have to focus on the record. So, and I've, I haven't done a video in years, but I know that it's a it's significantly less than what it was back in the day. Yeah. Now you okay. can do a video on your iPhone. Sure. Thank you. <laughs> and a great one. Make it happen. That's no joke. Right. So, but, yeah. but I still have to have a crew getting all kinds of angles and, and shooting yeah. it for real. Yeah. yeah. If I'm to compete with, the Beyonce's and the Adele's and you know all the artists that are out there today. I have to do it right. I can't yeah. do it with my iPhone camera. Although that would look right. great. It still has to be professional. So I understand. Thank you so much, Latoya. I enjoyed this. Thank you. I, really I thank you so much. I'm still over the moon. I'm just so happy um, to be here with you, and I just appreciate yes. you taking time out of your day and your life. I know the audiences thank is you. just Same so to you. excited. And same to them. And thank you all for doing the same. Again, it's a, an exchange. Yes, you know, I didn't take any more time out of my day than you did out of yours. You know, Listen, time yeah. well spent. Well, thank well, spent. well <laughs> right, spent. Thanks. I wish you all the success in life. I don't know if you want to leave our audience with anything else before you you, you get out of here. But no, you're more than welcome. You covered it all, and they know it too. Yeah. I'm doing my book, uh, autobiographical book. I'm working on a clothing line. I've got all kinds of stuff awesome. happening now. There's so many. Just because of these interviews, that's what I mean. Doing these interviews is like, it was like a resurgence of my career. I can't even put it any other way. I cannot. Wow. And I would have had to pay a, a journalist to do as many interviews as I've done. And I've been booking you myself so out of that. Girl, oh my God. But nobody like, can I, tell by our conversation. No one, you would think you would be like, oh, you know. <laughs> exactly, thank you. And I kind of am, oh, like, oh. I hope they're not bored with me, but the fans are right there. Yes. Oh my God. So I am booked through right now, uh, March 17th. March. Like, and they're not stopping. Every day I get at least two offers. Of, yes. Um, I'd love to do a request for an interview. I'm like, oh my, really? You still want to talk to me? And we're in a whole new year now. Like, wow. I just thank God. And yeah. so from this, I'm getting offers from other stuff. Good. Business wise, a podcast. They want me to do a podcast. I'm like, wow. God is yes, so good. Of course. It's, just, yes. it's, it's, it's really amazing. It's like, again, people may get away with something and hurting you in the beginning or whenever they do this, this tragic 
thing to you or hurt your feelings or or leave you or in my case with Raphael lost my house or with Invo being pushed out of the group and ostracized and turned on and now God is giving me back tenfold yes. what they took from me what I always say <laughs> no weapon formed against me shall prosper that is no the prayer weapon. That I okay I've been no saying weapons. that for years about the whole COVID thing too but no yeah. weapon formed not for years but for this whole year with COVID no weapon formed against us shall prosper this too oh shall pass this too shall pass. Yes. I'm going to hang on to those very words. Right, Again, exactly. I just love you and appreciate you. I'm just looking Thank forward so to much. looking as good as you do. I got 10 years. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, I'm Thank looking you. forward to it. I'm looking forward that. to it. And I can't wait to see you back out in these streets because I'm going to yes. be out there. I'm going to yes, be out I'm there. Be. Yes, ma'am. Maybe, maybe exactly. with my Vegas pass, whatever yes. I got to do. Exactly. You know. That's right. Yeah. Um, yeah. So thank you. And so let's much. keep in touch too, because I want to come back yeah. on the show when when my book is out. Oh, my album. sure, for Please. sure, for I sure. Definitely keep in touch. And we I the same talk city. To you about that lipstick too. I want to get. Yes, precisely me. Yeah, ten years old. Ten year old. Yeah. Makes up colors and um. It has makes not it faded or up. anything. Wow. Yeah, precisely me. Um, her name is Alexa Jene, and she's a beautiful little girl. She's so creative, and I'm so proud wow. of her. I'm she very proud of her too. Yeah. Me too. Oh. It's fine. Yeah. I, want my own it's fine now. I wasn't thinking about lipstick. <laughs> exactly. I was thinking about boys and playing outside, you know? Yeah, Come I said I was trying sure. to take stay out while the street lights was on, you know. <laughs> exactly. Come on, all of us. So yes, thank you yes. again, you guys. Thank, thank you. you so much, Latoya. Thank, thank you. We'll talk soon. Okay. And to all of you, thank you so much for watching this video today in your ear radio. You guys know your presence is my present. And I just love and appreciate you for tuning in every Saturday to In Your Ear Radio. We're going to be, we got to do an after dark soon. So that'll be coming up and hopefully we can get some, something good and juicy for you guys. I know y'all like to act up on a after dark. So, but thank you all for watching. I'm sorry if I didn't get to all of your questions in the chat, but I love and appreciate you all. And I hope that you enjoy the rest of your Saturday. Mwah. Love you so much. Thank you and have an awesome rest of your weekend.